<laughs> Hello, welcome to the Honest War Gamer. I'm your host, Rob. I'm joined by Mr. James Powell for the Age of Sigma Monday show. Hello, James, how are you? Ahoy, ahoy. Very well, very well. How are you? I'm great. I mean, what an exciting day. We've got a really exciting show for you where we'll be previewing uh, the Nomad Feastmasters Battle Tome, the first uh, early look of this Battle Tome in the world. So very much looking forward to that. Just some quick uh, notes before we get into any of it. Uh, our co-host Nathan is currently on a motorway in the middle of England where his van has broken down. So if anyone would like to send, um, I guess, like a spare engine to Nathan. Some, uh, or just go some... pick him up. Or pick him up. I don't know if anyone uh, in the chat works for the AA, but he would quite appreciate actually getting picked up. So uh, I please like do. the idea that there's a guy that works for the AA or lady sat watching this show right now and they're like, oh, I'll go get Nathan. <laughs> oh, sorry, love. Just be I'll be home in a minute. Put dinner on for a bit later. And, uh, Seems a I'll useful be use of my time. Oh, and actually, while I'm going, I'll get the spider riders from under the bed to give to him. <laughs> yes. Someone today That's suggested. Someone today suggested that the reason the Gits battle tome has been delayed until next year is just so Nathan can finish painting his Gits army. Um, well, we just... if you're a Gits player and you think that's the truth, please wait until 2082 <laughs> because they ain't finishing. <laughs> yeah. They ain't finishing. They are endless. No one else wants them. Uh, well, so uh, Nathan's not here, and Dan is still on the set of. Um, uh, I don't know if he's on the set of. Um, uh, oh, it wasn't called Shorties. I forget what that one that caused loads right, of. It's definitely just Stranger Things, but he won't admit to it. Yeah, Stranger Things 6, so Dan can't be here as well. So it's just going to be me and James going through the Nomad Feastmaster. So I hope you guys will appreciate this. Uh, also, some little other notes. We only got this book but three hours ago. Um, and in true tradition of a leaked battle tome, uh, we will be doing a bang up half ass job on reviewing it. So uh... should we should we discuss the person that works at the warehouse who took the photos for us to have this book, or should we just ignore them, pretend they don't exist, and say we broke into the warehouse and stole it ourselves? I don't think we should uh, admit to any theft uh, at okay. all. Uh, yeah. So thank you to, um, uh, like, thank you to the, uh, the leakers who sent us the information. Uh, just don't never forget. It's always morally right to steal from corporations. So please continue to do so. Uh, thank you to everyone who subscribed and join us live in the Twitch chat. Uh, Mason Knox, Jog PLC, uh, huge thank you to you. And I love Bologna, uh, for subscribing as well. So, uh, super appreciate that. Um, what is Bologna? Where is Bologna, I think, is the question who you should ask. Who is Bologna? <laughs> Listen, who's Why Bologna is us? Bologna? Right, okay, James, before we get me. into the show, how are you? How you been? Yeah, not too bad, not too shabby. Pretty well this week. Had a busy little week. Oh. Uh, I did more hobby this week than I've done in the last two months. Really? What have you been hobbying on? Can I know? Uh, so what have I done? So what day of the week is it today? Oh, it's Monday, so it's, it's a new week. So not this week. Last week. Last week. But that's this week in my head because we haven't seen the Twitch chat for a week. We uh, so what have I done? So I, on Monday, did the show. So we all know that. Tuesday, I did nothing. On Wednesday, I met up with a person I haven't seen in, I think, probably almost two years, mm -hmm. uh, who's a old Age of Sigma friend, uh, who's also a Rob, Rob Nixon. He's Lovely a great lad. lad. Um, and we played a game of uh, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. Now, this is pretty telling. So we're about to review the Noma Feastmasters Battle Tome, which is gnomes, yeah? Which yeah. are not a million miles away from a halfling, which is not yeah. a million miles away from a half foot. And I assume yeah. everyone in the chat has been watching the new Rings of Power show. And therefore, right now, there's a real convergence of, are we all just going to start playing... Uh, um, Middle Earth strategy battle games. Are we all going to run gnomes in our Age of Sigmar games? Like, there's a lot of crossover right now. Did, did you know? Mm. And I've not played them because I haven't played enough. But apparently, in Mesbug, uh, Hobbits super strong. Hobbits are super strong in Mesbug. Yeah, because they th all of them can throw a pebble. <laughs> yeah, and they're like two points each. So you get hundreds of them, and they all just throw pebbles. Just a wave of pebbles. Yeah, can you imagine like being like a dude on a horse, and it's just like, ah, pebble. But then there's like 60 pebbles, and, and you just bury it in pebbles. That is a lot of pebbles. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. A shower of stones. All right. Good. Well, okay. So uh, I'm glad you've been hobbying it up. I didn't get much opportunity to to hobby at the moment, which is unfortunate. Um, oh, oh, have I? No, I, I know what I was painting. I was actually painting. I painted at the weekend. I was running a Age of Sigmar tournament at the weekend, James, uh, which was super fun. But then I was also painting some Masters of the Universe game. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, Masters you play the of the game? Universe. I've not played the game yet. We're gonna we're we're saving playing the game until it's fully painted. Okay, that's good. Uh, right. I also because I cut my story short, so I played that. What else did I do? Oh, I played Blood Bowl again. Oh, you are getting into Blood Bowl at the moment. Well, so so Miles Hewitt, who I know you know, some of lovely the chat guy. might know, a lovely guy. Uh, he really wants to play. Um, and lots of people have told me that Blood Bowl is fun until people know what they're doing. And then it's very complicated, complex and intricate. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But as of yet, none of us know what we're doing. And it's a bunch of lovely people. So he's trying to get a league started. That's not a league in the sense of us going to a store. It's basically a bunch of us going to people's houses and playing Blood Bowl while we eat takeaway together. Sounds great. Sounds perfect in every way. Um, yeah, so me and Miles' partner, who's not normally a war gamer, played. Um, and we spent uh, however many turns is in a game of Blood Bowl. 16 times 16? 16, 16 each? Yeah, 32? Yeah. Whatever that is. We spent that in the middle of the pitch, punching each other in the face, not really getting the ball everywhere. Um, Katie, Miles' partner, had a croxigore. It punched my little tiny zombie in the face so hard it knocked itself out and wounded itself and ended up in the bin. So that was quite fun. Um, and then while we were playing, um, Meg and Miles played next to me. And that was more f interesting, I think, probably, because uh, Miles is playing a tier one wood elf team. Yes. Yeah, so in uh, for people who don't know, Blood Bowl is tiered. So they're like, this team is intentionally meant to be good. This team yeah. is intentionally meant to be really middle. And this team is eventually meant to be uh, like a power bottom. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Mars is playing Wood Elves, Tier 1, I think that's the best the tier. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Meg's playing Snotlings, oh. Tier 3. Tier 3? So they played another 32 turns next to us while we played uh, for a 2-2 two -two draw. Uh, wow. And there's a little Snotling playing a Vuvu Zayla, we decided, like a little trumpet. Mm. Scored a goal, punched three elves, carried the game. <laughs> Oh, and, and another guy scored who's, like, got a mushroom and a trench coat on who's now called the Flasher because Meg decided he looked like he'd be a Flasher. He scored too. Oh, lovely. All right, that's great. I think that really sets us up nicely for what we're about to review. Uh, and and uh, as is uh, as is the, the rest of the universe. Right now, there's a real battle for the little man in society uh, trying to get his due in the world. And I think that's kind of perfect for what we're about to do when we review the... Uh, the Nomad Feastmaster. So should we jump straight into it, James? In fact, actually, yeah, let's, let's, just, let's just do a little bit of, uh, of blurb before we start reviewing it. Uh, so this is a beta. This is a beta uh, version. Um, and what Darren, the creator, and there are other people who I need to shout out as well. Uh, but what Darren, the creator, wants uh, to happen is he wants his book to go out as a beta. He wants the community to play it, give him feedback. And then it's going to go through a process of getting... Uh, finalized and then I think there's a there will eventually be a PDF to download and also if you want at cost a battle tome to buy and obviously the battle tome is not a for-profit business because it's a uh, um, uh, an unofficial book if that makes sense uh, right so like that's basically the point and it's basically halflings in Age of Sigmar so unlike uh, if, if you were here for me reviewing uh, the battle tome that I wrote the other month when we did that um, this isn't written for a different universe. This is written for in-game in Age of Sigma. So there's a lot of crossover uh, that you can talk about. Uh, okay, so we look at little bits of art. Uh, um, uh, like, let's look at some little bits so you guys can check it out. So here's some of the artwork. So there is uh, there's art for the books. There are minis. Oh. So like some other stuff. There are minis that you'll be able to download and 3D print or purchase off. Um, people who already have gnome-based uh, miniatures. I can't remember which one it was, but it was someone. So they'll uh, they'll be uh, like so you could just immediately buy it off a company, or you can 3D print them, or one of your friends can 3D print them, or you could probably buy them off someone on Etsy or something. So you will be able to have 
like uh, you will be able to buy the miniatures and paint them and build them if that makes sense. So it's not just like something esoteric. Like you it's can also fit... kind of interesting, right? Because I guess because it's a almost like fan made battle tome. Yeah, there's gonna be like a bunch of people who take a different route to make the models as they are in the book. Yeah, of course. I mean, some people might sculpt them themselves. Some people might kitbash them. Like, you've got a variety of different options. I think, I think uh, effectively, this battle tome, uh, the one I did earlier, and stuff in the future, I think, effectively, uh, Age of Sigma or a fantasy war game in the future uh, will effectively become model agnostic in, in many ways uh, because there are just so many opportunities to print stuff. I happen to print some Scryracolites. Sorry, no. Rats with magical balls at the weekend. I should be very specific on what exactly they were. <coughs> yeah, rats with magical Which balls. Which might get proxied as Scryracolites. Which might be. Oh, I've got a button for that. Hold on, James. Um, uh, let me just do this. Oh, it didn't work. Fuck. Okay, don't worry about it, James. So close. So close. Yeah, that was so worked. I did have a button for that. Anyway, so here's the artwork, and here you can see a bunch of nomad feast masters uh, battling it out. It looks like uh, against a bunch of, uh, it looks like fleshy accords of all things, which is quite fun. Um, so do you want to find out the story? And because I think yeah, before I think... we before we get into the rules, and we're and like. We're not going to be the the law guys. We're not going to go through all of the law, even though obviously every um, every army is a narrative army. So here's the army uh, as the miniatures you can see on the screen as well. So if you listen to this back as a podcast, thanks for listening. Uh, please do stay hydrated. But there are some pictures, and I'll include some links to the pictures so you can click on them as well. But here you can see a full army. Uh, there you can see a battle swan, a caravan. Um, and a bunch of other units there. You can see the caravan. Um, uh, there is a ram chariot. That is correct. Oh, it's actually a caravan. Technically, it's not a chariot. So that's something to is be it, aware of. Maybe we should do this show on what defines as a chariot again, and then well, this is fine. This well, <laughs> a chariot is two wheels, and it's not just. Oh, yeah. It's not. Yeah, but it doesn't say it's a chariot. It's it's a it's a caravan. What about a scourge runner chariot that has no wheels? That has one wheel in the middle. Oh, it does have one wheel, but not two. It's not a chariot. It's, it's important okay. to note. Uh, so the sleds. You, yeah, but here you can see all of the. You can see. Uh, you can see the chefs. You can see the little cook pots. You can see the terrain piece. Um, right. So there's. A, is there a Lenny Henry? There's absolutely a Lenny Henry who's smashing it out of the park right now. Uh, as I'd a like to say also, interesting that this fan book decided to do terrain piece. I'd like to ask Darren what made him decide to do a terrain piece when Games Workshop only do it for half of their ranges. That's true, they do. And, like, quite randomly as well, don't they? Yeah. I think maybe he wanted to, like, fulfil it out, I guess is the right answer. Um, amazing PR to launch this at the same time as Lord of the Rings series. Such forward thinking. I agree. Well done. Um, well done. Uh, so there's the uh, there's the units. As you can see, a bunch of different halflings. They've all got different units. We're going to go through all of the rules today. But a bit of lore uh, before, they, uh, before we get into it. Warring gods pay no heed to the soft of foot or the lower voice. So relentless are their desires to sow ruin in their wake and the make du uh, and make dust of life. Whilst these seething forces crash upon each other, a bloody tide forever ebbing and flowing and unseen folk made good in the quiet places. Now, before we go any further with this, James, uh, this was yep. written by, uh, and you'll know him really well. Do you know who's, who wrote this? Because the law was written not by Darren. It was written by someone else. Okay. Do you want to know who it was? Yeah, I do, yeah. Uh, it's Mark Wilson from Blood Tithe and LGT. Oh, Amazing. he's a nice lad. He's a great guy. And it turns out a bit of a dab hand with a word and some prose. Uh, so there you go. So I'll carry on. Sigmar sees not this, not this little people. His baleful gaze is drawn only to battle uh, that his forces may once again enslave the realms under the dominion of man. Atop his lofty spire, Sigmar cares not for the meek denizens of the realms. He presumes to rule, but others do. The God King Betrayer has long forgotten his once kin, uh, abandoned eons past, consigned forever into the abyss of the world that was. But <coughs> as a dormant seed in the cruelest of winters, this hardy folk did not perish. Instead, they germinated deep from view and over the ages coming to prosper in perfect symbiosis with all about them. Uh, though the nomads emerged from the hibernation and blossomed, their pathways through the realms remain concealed, even from the scrying of sorcerers and farseers. Uh, across the verdant trails do the great nomadic 
um, and nomadic with a G N uh, for gnome, a nomadic, which is so far the best bit of the book. Um, caravan menders, uh, caravans meander, following the mighty herds across the sweeping savanna and over frigid tundra. Gifted by Garan, these trails once pristine arteries, sustaining an atid. I can't say that word. Ideal, untouched by the machinations of war. The necroquake changed everything. Malign light starkly reveal these once hidden pathways. Incursions hurry through tears in their uh, worn fabric to gorge themselves upon the virgin bounty. Stout defenders uh, of all things pure and once peaceful folk, the nomad feastmasters rouse themselves for war. So there was a bunch of pathways um, or trails that were hidden throughout the world. Um, uh, at, well, maybe just in the realm of Garan, but maybe the world. Uh, and then uh, the necro cake kind of like tore into them, and now everyone's like, "Ooh, tasty dinner!" And then they're attacking them, and that's where. So if you've watched episode three of Rings of Power, it's literally the little caravan trail, little rolling down the road, just rolling down the road. Uh, hopefully, they're not as mean as those people. They're like, "Oh, you've got a bad foot. You die now. That's it. You're dead." <laughs> you at the back, son. <laughs> at the back, son. Yeah, like, oh, I, I might die. Oh, well, life's, life's harsh. Um, so there we go. So that's there's, the law. There's a book for it, though. There's a book for that. There is a book for that. How do you feel uh, How do you feel about the, the law so far, James? Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. I want to know uh, how the swan came to hang out with some gnomes. Okay. I feel like swans are snooty. Like, if I was a swan, I'd be like... Pfft. Peasants. Well, they sound a bit Tory, don't they? Well, to like... everyone. Like, everyone's worse than you if you're a swan, I think. Because birds are pretty pretentious anyway. Sorry if you're a bird person. Uh, so, and I think swans are birds probably... Birds are the... pretentious. I think that yeah. here at the Honest Wargamer, we can uh, we can <laughs> uniformly agree that birds are a bit uppity. So I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see, like, uh, yeah, how the swan wants to hang out with some little halflings. That's, yeah. that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, and I hope I really hope that they've got some vets to look after them, because these swans are sick. <laughs> that was terrible. Oh, oh. Anyway, okay, right, let's get on with the photo review. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, birds aren't real. I agree. Um, that's also true. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at the battle tome. So there's a bunch of different units. We'll quickly give you a quick overview of what there is in the army. Oh, nice. So uh, our battle line unit are called the Nomad Drovers. Okay? Yeah. So those are our battle line. Uh, we've also got, in the non-battle line role, Gastronome Guard, Nomad Scouts, Nomad... Uh, sorry, Griffhound Hobblars... <coughs> Nomad Scouts riding Jade Eagles, and the Gastronome War Caravan is our Behemoth, and then uh, our Nomad Hot Pot is our Artillery. We have three endless spells: the Nomad, Ho uh, sorry, the Spectral Briar Hedge, the Habeninka Sentry. I've definitely said that wrong, and the Detrius Denizen Swarm. Okay, happy with that, James? Nice. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Do you know? Uh, we're gonna have to go back now. Why? First time I've seen a. Uh... Uh, battle line unit of 15 in a while. 15? 15. What I was hoping for was like old school Warhammer Fantasy 8s. 8s. <laughs> 8s are a really good one. 8 Knights of Bretonia. Like, <laughs> just really obscure numbers. So I would like Griffhound Hobblers? Hobblers? Hobblers. Whatever. Hobblers? Mm. Like, like 7.5 of them. One's just not got a lad on. Just yeah, yeah. Seven. <laughs> There's just no guy on top. Yeah, I agree. I really like. That's why I like Bliss Barb Archers. They're like eleven, and you're like, what? Eleven? Yeah. Like okay, but yeah, fifteen Nomad Drovers is your battle line. They're a hundred points for fifteen, so I expect them to be pretty shit, if that makes sense. Because uh, there's fifteen of them. Uh, however, uh, our Gastronome Guard is 140 for 5, so they sound pretty tough. Our Nomad Scouts, we've got 10 of them for 100 points. Our Griffhound Hoblars, there's 5 of them for 120 points. Nomad Scouts riding Jade Eagles, there's, 100, uh, sorry, there's 5 of them for 130 points. Our War Caravan, 220 points um, for our War Caravan. Uh, and then our Endless Spells are pretty cheap. And then we've obviously got our Gastronome Encampment, which is our terrain piece. And then we've got the Trailmaster on War Cockerel. Okay. Yeah. Two hundred points. Our hedge hermit, who's a wizard, is one hundred twenty points. A Mephisto Harstock, 
120 points. That's also another leader. We've got the head chef, who's a leader, and the trail thief, who's a leader, 110 points. But most importantly, this model cannot be selected to be your general. Oh, and I am guessing Mephisto Harstock's going to be a named character. Named character. Because that's a weird, that's a weird title if it's not your name. Mephisto Harstock. I need to be very yeah. careful how I'm I a say it. I'm a, I'm a Mephisto Harstock. Oh, what, what's that? Oh, there's seven of us. Yeah. We're all Mephisto Harstocks here. The interesting thing about the Trailmaster on Warcock Raw E isn't a behemoth. We haven't got into this detail yet. Uh, but that does mean if you wanted to, you could run um, up to six cocks. Nice. So Just, just for uh, Adam Mumford. Well, exactly. Exactly. Currently number one in the UK, by the way, on the TSN rankings. So just important to note. Like, it's number one. It's <laughs> okay. embarrassing for everyone that's playing hard. It's embarrassing for everyone else. Yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, right, okay. So the um, so those are our units. Uh, some other little bits. There are some optional battle lines. You get the Gastronome Guard as battle line if you take the Blazed Trail, which is one of the sub-factions. Happy yeah. with that? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, so let me just scroll to the very fucking top of this document. One second. Okay, there's our there's our. Oh, we've seen you've you've probably seen the cover art online, but there's the cover art as well. So there's our Nomad Feastmaster, actually modelled after, if no one's met him, Mr. Donald Taylor. Looks identical. Oh, nice. uh, and I actually have a picture I can finally put up uh, of uh, from over a year ago of uh, Donald looking exactly like this. Um, uh, big face, yeah, I agree. There are a lot of cocks in Warhammer, so uh, right, okay. So let's look at our uh, let's look at our battle traits. So these are allegiance abilities. If you take all Nomad Feastmasters, okay. So Nimble is our first one, um, and hit rolls for attacks that target friendly barefoot units, okay. And not everyone has the barefoot keyword. Okay. Um, always fail on a roll of one or two. So normally when you're rolling to hit, it always fails on a one. However, they fail on a one or two. So they've almost got transhuman, which is a space marine trait where you can't wound them on one, two, or threes, uh, which you pay a CP for. Like, it's incredibly powerful. Uh, okay. So obviously, this isn't quite as strong as that, but still pretty strong, uh, meaning that all of the special stuff that you might have done to get yourself hitting on twos doesn't work. Well, wound on twos won't work as well. Uh, sorry, hitting on twos, sorry, um, won't work. Um, uh, so then, uh, a barefoot unit that has made a change uh, charge. Oh, sorry, improve the same characteristic of models in a barefoot unit that's in cover by one. So if you're in cover, uh, you get an additional plus one. And a barefoot unit that has made a charge move in the same turn does not receive the benefit of cover. Okay. Okay. okay yep. Good. All right. We're happy with that. Okay. And then there's a bunch of which is quite nice designers notes because I know that Nico did a bunch of the. Uh, and if you don't know Nico Warhol, uh, Nico, I definitely said his last name wrong, but fucking who cares? Uh, sorry, Nico, love you forever. South London Legion rocks. Um, the uh, he's done a bunch of designers note stuff in here, um, so like that, which is great because then like some really clear, so like you can tell this is a community written thing because it makes sense, which yep. is pretty. And, and I also don't have to like because it's digital; it can just get amended. It can just get amended. So oh, good. It's like... It's like it's 2022. Do you, know what, yeah? do you know what, James? I really want to pick up. The, I really want to pick the, the emotions up for everyone in the chat. So we need to know today's is a very great day. Uh, they've told us in the UK we're not allowed to party for the next 10 days, but I'm going to party right now. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to talk about some little fellas. Um, okay, uh, so we've done that. In addition, enemy units uh, may not pick a barefoot hero. So a barefoot hero as a target for an attack with a missile weapon if it's wholly uh, on or within a terrain feature. And within three inches of friendly unit that has three or more models. So your characters can be kept fairly safe at the back of the board. Happy with that? Yep. Sorry, okay. I was catching up. Okay, I, that like went through my head. Not over, just through. <laughs> It's going to be a real focus day today, bud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that means you get to keep your characters safe, which is really nice because uh, you've got your little characters, uh, and in this case, they're even littler characters, so I guess your little, little characters? Little guys, yeah. you could describe them as, um, and they're just teeny tiny, um, and so they can you can't target them uh, if they're near other units, which is, is really fun. Um, okay, so Nature's Blessing. So this is another battle trait. So that, we've talked about those already. So um, wound rolls of one or two are going to fail, um, and then you can keep your characters safe, basically, and you get plus one save and cover. Right now, now all of their barefoot, which matters it, later, right? Later <laughs> matters later. That if they're barefoot, if they're barefoot, cool. uh, if they right. got shoes on, 
Not so fast. Not so fast. Shoes on, easy to hit. Barefoot, yeah. can't find them. Nature's blessing. Each time a friendly nomad feastmaster unit is affected by a spell or endless spell on a six, you can ignore it, which is like nice, I guess, but like, like don't care really. Um, uh, and then towering allies, uh, and no, but maybe there's going to be ways to improve that in the future, if that makes sense. Like yeah. who knows? Right, towering allies. A nomad feast, a nomad feastmaster's army can include coalition units. See below as follows: one in every four units in a nomad feastmaster's army can be chosen from the following war scrolls: Spirit of Durthu, Tree Lord Ancient, Tree Lord. Or Arwen Jacks, son of the Jade Forest, which is a name character we're going to find out uh, down below um, in the War Scrolls here. Um, is this a joke? Genuinely can't tell. Of course it's not a joke. It's uh, it's a 100% uh, unofficial battle tone, if that helps you out. Um, and if anyone in the chat comes in, uh, hopefully you can ask. This is so fun. Oh, good. Lovely. Right, okay, so... Um, this is really good, uh, and the, and the story behind that, obviously, James, is because like in the realm of Garan, which is a Lariel, and therefore the Sylvaneth kind of like realm, as much as Nurgle doesn't want that to be true, then uh, there's a bunch of um, ways that you can move the units around. Uh, like like the whole thing was given to them by nature, so they obviously they can ally quite strongly with the Sylvaneth, basically, because yeah. the Sylvaneth popping around gen- with trees. Exactly, they're generally pretty tri- chill, apart from Drycher. Not he's not chill at all. Not she's chill. got all the no chill, right? She's yeah, she's a no chill. She's a she's a no chill. She's a no chill. She's like the police, no chill. Um, right. So then, uh, rouse the guardians. Right. A nomad feastmaster army can summon a tree lord by adding guardian counters to terrain features. Yeah. Okay. When three guardian counters have been added to a terrain feature, the player who added the third guardian counter. Um, uh, may spend all the guardian counters from that terrain feature and summon a tree lord to the battlefield and add it to their army. Any summon units must be set up wholly within six inches of the terrain feature and more than six inches away from enemy units. So the terrain the terrain features can um, generate tree lords. Nice. Even okay. better when it's a brick wall. I mean, even better, right? Well, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like it's just a Pop house. Pop a tree out a brick wall. Yeah, just yeah. more impressive than popping one out of a forest. Out of a pool would be okay out of a, yeah, pool of blood, just a like... pool of blood yeah like a tree ran like emerging yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. that would be in that. a sexy fashion though like t- peeling its thong off and going a sexy tree lord yeah wow wow it's not as sexy as gandalf but other than i that, mean who fine. is who is sexy than gandalf how many gandalfs do you own uh like seven <laughs> Right. Okay. So, um, uh, when an, sorry, when an enemy monster picks a train feature that has, so they've got a special rule for if you smash it to rubble, you get rid of the guardian tokens. Okay. Yep. Okay. Guardian counters. Sorry, guardian counters. Um, right. So then, this is like maybe one of their stronger battle traits, which is called those lucky scoundrels, which. Um, just targeting the terrain will smash and removes the tokens. Correct, it does. It says that up there. When a monster picks a terrain feature, uh, so you can see that up there. Um, right, so uh, those lucky scoundrels, okay? This is to do with being double turned, yeah? So if ever a double turn happens, yeah, for either player, I'm pretty certain, if either player has two consecutive turns as a result of the priority roll, then this battle trait applies, okay? Okay. So if either player has a double turn, then bosh. And, thi- and then this happens next. Yeah, Apply all of the following rules in that battle round. So if you double turn me, James, or I double turn you, yeah. Nomad Feastmasters uh, ignore negative modifiers to their hit and wound rolls. So no minus one to hit for me. Okay. Uh, if the wound roll for an attack made by a friendly Nomad Feastmaster unit is an unmodified six, the attack team inflicts a mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. Yeah. So they become skinks. Friendly nomad feastmasters have a five plus ward. Nice. That's great. Five plus ward for the whole army. I mean, obviously Nogo has that all the time, but this is just during a double turn. These and are then... just little lads, though. These are just it's little 15 lads. Fifteen in some of these units. For a hundred points, imagine how yeah. absolutely tossed they're going to be. Like <laughs> <laughs> five up ward, though. Five up ward, Wipe though. The dirt. Five up ward. Yeah, you Double like... turn me all day. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, this is going to get bounded around. Uh, and your opponent cannot re-roll, multiply, or modify any casting, unbinding, dispelling, chanting, and banishing rolls. Now, I think this is a little bit of a nod towards leprechauns. 
Nice. Because I think there's a variety of different little people in narr- like you know, in fantasy history. So I think this is kind of like a little bit of a nod to them. So um, you know, at this also, point, also what I'd what I'd missed the first way round is this is either of you double turn. This is so if I'm of playing you. the nomads like, and I double turn you, I get a load of buffs too. Correct, correct. So, so then s- I just throw all my fifteen lads at you, and all of them I got a five at ward. James, like you seem to be obsessed with the idea that you're only going to have fifteen gnomes, but I need you to know that's a hundred points. You're going to have more than fifteen gnomes. You're going to have many more than fifteen. Well, I gnomes. mean, I've got to have forty-five of those lads, probably. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wonder how many I could have. Like, I like a horde army. Well, like, that's I what Robert. How many? Have you seen what Robert Extreme I... in the chat has put? He's put 280 no. wounds worth of no. gnomes with five at wards and it hits of one or two fail. Yeah, that's swarm. what I want. How many points is that, Rob? Work that out for me. Well, there are 100 points each. So, like. I yeah, but that's... I don't want to do the 50s. Okay. All right. Someone work me out how many gnomes I get for 1,700 points. <laughs> Uh, okay, there's still some more allegiance release to go. So let's keep going. Go with your gut. Nomad's battle prowess largely depends on their last meal. Okay? So this is basically at the start. James, you and me set up. Yeah? Yep. Right? And then Bosch. Um, uh, when does it? When do you do it again? Uh, before the battle begins, immediately before setting up armies. So before I set my army up, we roll yep. a D6. James, pick me a, D- pick me, um, a D3. So give me a... a... Hang on, no. Yeah, go roll on. Dice. Roll me one. One. Perfect. That's, That's breakfast. Yeah. Nice. A one to like two is breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. Then you add three inches to the range of all friendly Nomad Feed Masters missile weapons because they're full and they're doing well. And then add one to run and charge rolls. In addition, friendly Nomad Feast Masters may retreat and still shoot later in the same turn. Oh, yeah. Because they are absolutely full of dinner. Well, breakfast. I hope they're throwing stones cause, because Robert X Trem. In the chat has told me I can have 255 little lads with enough points for a swan. <laughs> Which are sick. Okay, important to point out. Are we just going to do this all the time? All the time. Yeah, sick. Yeah, absolutely sick. So, uh, so add three inches to range of the friendly uh, weapons. Now, this is like a random buff that you obviously, uh, you obviously are going to get um, at the start of each battle, right? So, you're never going to be able to... Uh, like predict these so there you go if you're all a three to a four you get lunch which is friendly nomad feastmasters may add two to their nature's blessing rolls in addition your opponent may not re-roll any hit or wound roll attacks that target barefoot units okay you think that's good you happy with that yeah seems pretty good well there aren't many re-rolls in the game anyway anymore but yeah still uh and then uh you've got dinner Okay, subtract Artist uh, Fury. Uh, hello, thank you very much for resubscribing. Thank you also to Malk in the chat for resubscribing. Really appreciate you. Stabgrot Plus, thanks for resubscribing. Uh, massive love. Um, uh, dinner is subtract, subtract, take away three inches from the range of all friendly Nomad Feastmasters because you're a bit full. You're like, oof. Oh, big roast. Big roast, yeah, exactly. At, at one of them swans. Yeah, yeah. Um, and subtract one from the run and charge rolls. Uh, so subtract one from your run and charge rolls, which is pretty rough. In addition, no my Feastmasters unit that are benefiting from the Lucky Scoundrels, which is five at ward, get a four at ward. Madness. Because that's, that's when we double turn, right? That's when you double turn. So now yeah. I just want to double turn, right? So now I'm like, I'll roll a five or a six. Let's double turn all day. I throw my uh, 255 lads in. They've all got a four at ward. They probably hit on fives and wound on sixes, but it doesn't matter because there's hundreds of them. Hundreds. Hundreds. Okay. So, yeah, minus three T shootings. But you don't know that, so it's all random. So you already turn up to the dinner. No, dinner? <laughs> I'm really on theme there. You turn up to the table, sorry, where you're playing your game and you don't know yep. how, bu- how buffed you are, right? I imagine if you miss the double, dead. I agree. Um, but, again, you can't control this anyway. So you're just living your best life. Um, there's some other stuff. Uh, in here as well. Uh, specifically, the, the they have a set of rules where um, uh, that goes through the turns. So like I Death Deepkin, as an example, yep. or Daughters of Cain. Okay, so on turn one, nothing happens. However, as the game goes on, you get more hungry. You get hungrier okay. and hungrier, right? So yep. on turn two, you're snacking. 
Yeah, subtract one from the run rolls for this unit. Yeah, okay. that's a problem. Uh, I don't think you roll for each unit. No, my Feastmasters units have a different, it's been a long day ability. Each battle round is shown on the table below. Yeah, yeah. So you just, it's just the whole army. So then you're minus one for your run rolls because you're just, you're a bit peckish and you're working hard. Number yeah. three, your belly's rumbling. Subtract one from run and charge rolls for this unit. So hungry. So Get in hungry. there. Well, round four, you're starving, James. Oh, oh. Marvin. <laughs> Marvin, subtract one from run and charge rolls this unit. In addition, this unit can only move up one inch when making piling moves. Oh, Pretty rough. Yeah. However, turn five, you're hangry. You've scar branded. Yeah, you've gone furious. <laughs> and you add one to all wound rolls, plus one to all wound rolls. In addition, half the number of models that run away are due to battle shock. So, turn five is your strongest turn if you've made it to turn five. Because you're hangry. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It could could turn the game being hangry. It could. What I like is if you were playing this at an event too, and it's like a hellhole six gamer. Yeah. Like, at the end of game two, you'd be hangry yourself. So you'd be hangry. Your lads would be hangry. Everyone would be hangry. Yeah, we really need like a, a new, like, you know, game three. I see some people on Game 3s at the minute who are just having the worst time of their life. They're, like, completely done in by Game 3. So, uh, anyway. Someone walking around with bread, buttered bread, Yeah. And someone walking around with hot chips, chip butties. At a, an event? Yeah. You've already changed my life. I'm immediately <laughs> going to buy an air fryer tomorrow for the venue. Sorted. Immediately. Do it. What an incredible idea. What an incredible... Anyway, right. Next up. Tectonic Bulwark. Yeah, so this is Nomad Feastmasters Wizards or Silverneth Wizards, including unique units. In a Nomad Feastmasters army, know a special spell called Tectonic Bulwark, right? Which basically is cast on a five and it's range of 24 inches and you count as being in cover. Uh, sorry, no, uh, within a terrain feature, wholly within a terrain okay. feature. So this is good because this means you can make it so someone can not target your character because if you're holding within a terrain feature, you can like not be there if that makes sense. So yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like a way of doing shroud. It's a way of getting like cover. Um, so like there's some nice little tricks there basically. Yeah, uh, nice. and then expedient providence, which is at the start of the hero phase, you can carry out this heroic action with a friendly nomad feastmasters hero instead of like a regular hero. Um, you pick. Uh, a Nomad Feastmaster's hero, and the Lucky Scoundrel's ability applies to them for that turn. So then they nice. would end up having a five-up ward. Or a four-up ward if they'd had their dinner. If they'd had their dinner. You, look at you. You're smashing this. So you've had your dinner. dinner. Yeah. Uh, so that is uh, all of the Allegiance <coughs> abilities. That... So, so far, yeah. the pun was the best thing about the book. <laughs> yes, I agree. I can't remember the pun, otherwise I'd have recited it. Yeah. Secondly, we know that dinner is apparently the best meal of the day if you're a nomad. Yes. Oh, you think dinner's the best feature? Yeah, because I want that f like four reward. Like it's risky as only you only get four reward on a double. Yeah, but that's what I want. My two hundred and fifty-five See... guys, they want a four reward. Yeah, what about second breakfast? It's not in there, but it should be. Maybe. We haven't looked at any of the other rules yet. Uh, to answer some questions in the chat, uh, this unofficial battle term was written by Mr. Darren Watson or at Positive Victim uh, on uh, Twitter, and he will be in the Twitch chat, so you can look at his Twitch name and he'll link you to his profile. Um, there's also going to be a, uh email, including the show notes, um, which is nomads uh, at hotmail.co.uk, which... You can um, uh, also email, but again, I'll include all those in the show notes later below. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the nature's blessing thing is yet, so I feel like that's the stronger pick, lunch. Oh, but you don't get to boring. choose. But you don't get to choose, so you, it doesn't fucking matter. That's right. Hang on, I'm going to roll it again. Oh, I, I just, I'm just i just eating breakfast. You, you just oh, had second breakfast. Dinner. You just had, had second breakfast. breakfast. And then dinner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Forget good. lunch. Yeah. Not important. Imagine, imagine, like, imagine the real serious face of like a pro tournament gamer. They work, they walk away from the table. They go to the bar. They have a drink. Someone comes over, goes, "How was your game?" Like terrible. Like, what happened? But, like, I rolled breakfast again. I really needed a dinner in that matchup. I really needed it. You'd be like, <laughs> I, I like the idea where someone's running like hyper competitive. Walk to the bar, have a drink. The mate comes over. Ah, oh, did you smash him? And they're like, no. 
<laughs> Someone in the he chat had says 255 lads and they'd just eaten dinner. <laughs> he had a four at ward every time I double turned and I double turned all game. I double turned all game. I double turned, then he double turned. He'd had his dinner. There were so many ward saves. Um, uh, right, so I've got Plues in the chat. Ask. I've been listening to you guys for over two years now. I never knew uh, where to find the show notes. So if you watch on YouTube, you look in the description. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, you also look in the description. If you're watching this on Twitch, there is no show notes. Because it's on Twitch. So you must go to YouTube or you must go to uh, uh, the, 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 the podcast. Podcast, yes. Uh, so my found apologies. on all places where podcasts are found. Yeah, we're on Spotify, but yeah. we're not. Um, no, yeah, we're not on. Yeah, we're not on some, not like some. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Okay. If you're right. on Spotify, that's all that matters. Yeah, it's true. Uh, it's been a long day. I quite like that like, the, the army gets worse as the game goes on, but then it gets hangry, which I think is interesting. Uh, it's also, we're also on SoundCloud, uh, as is my Mumble Rap album, so if you'd like to go check it out. Uh, right, okay, so we're going to, for the moment, James, we're going to skip over the command traits, the enhancements. <gasps> we're just going gonna to go back to it. Let's not worry. Yeah. yeah, okay. I just think there's a lot of front-loaded information. This isn't the way I normally do nope. things nowadays. Yeah, we're also going to miss out the sub-factions. We'll come back to the sub-factions. We know enough right now that we can crack on. Yeah, and then we're going to also skip the grand strategy and battle tactics. And with all due respect to everyone working on this battle tome, we're actually never going to read them. That's really important to know uh, for you. But it's nice that they're in there. You can see there are also some battalions as well. There's the Gourmet Brigade, the larger Vorketeers, and the Coniferous Conflagration. Um, and so uh, if you have a Gourmet Brigade, you need, must take one uh, Head Chef uh, n mandatory. You must have one Nomad Hot Pot. Uh, sorry, two nomad hot pots, but you can have up to yep. four nomad hot pots and two head chefs. Okay. Nice. There is, um, yeah, and that will get you either. Uh, no, that gets you definitely gets you abundance, and then it either gets you um, strategist, which is an extra command point, or magnificent, which is an extra enhancement. Uh, they've yep. got they've got a couple of special uh, abilities uh, for their battalions. So you've obviously got one drop, or you get an extra CP, or you get different enhancements. They've got abundance, which is add two reinforcement points to the Nomad Feastmasters army roster. So you could have up to six reinforcements in this army. So James, if you have your battle line 15 lads, you could have yes. 45, 45, and 45 lads in that army. It's, I don't feel like it's enough. <laughs> I'd like to see a unit of 60 I'll put it in the FAQ Yeah you will <laughs> Hey Charlie Can they thanks. come in 20s? Huh? 110 points for 20 Yeah yeah, yeah they should do that That, that seems okay um, So there's that uh, And then if you take a con Coniferous Confabulatory uh, Then you You must take a Tree Lord Ancient uh, A Hedge Wizard uh, sorry, what's he called? A hedge hermit. Apologies. Uh, but you can have an additional hedge hermit, and then you can have a Durthu, and then two tree lords. And that gets you expert and pragmatism over the pride. The general may be a tree lord ancient, uh, spirit of Durthu, or a butcher. Or yeah. butcher. Oh, I think that's a mistake, because. Oh, no, there must not. be a butcher. A lad that kills the, the goats. No, there's a. Uh, maybe that's a mistake. I need to change it. Or not a butcher. Um, I think we'll we'll find out. Oh, thanks. Um, I've just had some reinforcements delivered to myself. Um, but anyway, anyway, this is the beta version, so important to point that out. Right. Okay. I so think it's supposed to be a butcher. It's not meant to be a butcher. Is it meant to be a butcher? There you go. You're seeing the sub faction. You're seeing the sub faction. Oh my God! Is this is this an ogre leak? Oh my god! Shh. And also, Don't tell people we got this from the the lad in the factory who keeps sending us photos of battle tomes. I know. Thank you, lad in the factory. He actually oh, doesn't matter. He was fired. Um, okay, so sad news for us all. Uh, show me the path to glory. I'm ready for some cookies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, right, we're gonna go straight to the bottom here uh, because I think the right way to do this, this is how I review battle tomes anyway, is I find out what the terrain piece does. And then we're going to look at the war scrolls and then we're going to go back to all the other uh, business at the top, yeah? So the yeah. gastronome encampment, James. Okay? Nomadic communities travel along the magically protected trails in large Habaninka Grove enchanted caravans. When conflict becomes impossible to avoid, they will create defensive circles with these caravans around their most precious commodity. Very much like when settlers in the West, um, who were taking land from native peoples, uh, would 
to form defensive yeah. circles to protect themselves uh, as they stole and pillaged the land that was never theirs. Uh, so you know the ones I mean from the Western movies. Sorry, yeah, propaganda. Yeah. 50s agi prop. Sorry. Gonna paint your wagon. Gonna yeah, paint, paint your wagon. wagon. Yeah. We're gonna paint it red. Don't Keep going. Anymore. That's that's my lot. Let's do it again. I'm gonna paint your wagon. <laughs> paint wagon. You're gonna, you're paint, gonna it paint it red. The problem, the problem being that in a minute we'll get that thing where we get struck and we have to lose ten seconds of the video because my singing's <laughs> that high quality. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> right. Okay. So, uh, so let's let's read what it does. A gastronome encampment is a single terrain feature consisting of three gastronome encampment models. Um, each tip of each gastronome encampment model must touch the tip of a different gastronome encampment model. Jokes in the chat, please. With the tips of all the models pointing inward so that the ring is formed. Hang on, what? <laughs> you got to make the tips touch to make the ring form. Okay. Okay. Right. Yep. The battlefire, the battlefield inside the ring is treated as part of the gastronome encampment. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. Okay. So there are three bits to it, and that forms a ring, right? It's like docking. Yeah. Thanks, Meg Facey. I appreciate it. I don't know what that is, but thank you. Okay. You don't um, want to know. Okay. Well, there we go. Right. So is it like the bit in the boys? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, right. So scenery rules for hearth and home. After territories have been chosen. But before armies are set up, you can set up the gastronome encampment wholly within six inches of an objective within your territory. Oh, within within six inches of an objective. That's actually kind of interesting. Ring that objective. You can, yeah. Paint, roll in, roll in, roll in. <laughs> Keep your wagons rolling. Keep, Keep your rolling, wagons rolling. Roll in. Roll in. Nomads. <laughs> We're coming for the objectives. We're going to eat our dinner. Right, anyway, no other restrictions apply when setting up a gastronome encampment. If this isn't possible because of other terrain features have been placed obscuring that objective, you can remove those terrain features that are wholly or partially within your territory and attempt to set up faction terrain again. If there are no objectives on the table or within your territory, uh, you can set up the nomad encampment wholly within your territory. If both players can set up faction terrain features at the same time, you must roll off. Example. Sure. Uh, right, okay. Uh, so if both players, so we know about setting up. It's kind of interesting. It's quite strong setting up something on a, a terrain feature, especially if it's got. Oh, it doesn't have impassable as a terrain. No, but it hides you. It hides your heroes and gives them a. Done oh yeah, it counts as cover. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So the gastronomy encampment. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it's an obstacle. So it is impassable. Yeah. yeah? So, uh, and then Nomad Feastmasters units treat this terrain feature as having the inspiring scenery rule, which I think is possible nice. to bravery. And then yep. with determining control of an objective, each Nomad Feastmaster barefoot model, wholly on or within an encampment, counts as two instead of one. Nice. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Um, counts as two instead of one. So then that wouldn't combine with um, uh, Unmatched Conquerors, uh, obviously thinking yep. about that. Uh, to make it five, because it's either two or three. Because you get that already, right? When you take, when you play Stormcast, because I know you've been playing Stormcast. When you play, not Signs of the Storm, the other one that you play sometimes, James, which is yep, um, Foot Lads. It's the only one I've played. Yeah, where you count as more an objective. They don't, they don't combine with on my okay. conquerors. So they won't be worth six. They'd be no. worth three. Yeah, they'd be worth three. Yeah, similar to the, not that anyone cares, but similar to the agenda for Zinch as well, but that's just me who cares. All right, enemy units may not be set within three inches of this terrain feature. So that's kind of interesting, especially for some, like, uh, like especially for being Chameleon able to use it. Yeah, just anything that teleports, especially some cheeky little, can I, um, can I interest you in a skitter leap to a vermin or deceiver by any chance? Ooh la la, none of that anymore. You'd use it to zone out the board. It's going to be quite good. And if there are ten or more Nomad Feastmaster models wholly on or within the gastronome encampment, roll a dice each time an enemy unit uses an ability whose effect involves picking this terrain feature on a three plus that ability has no effect. In addition, an unmodified six, that enemy suffers <coughs> D3 plus three mortal wounds. So if you run over to try and Just stomp... kick it in. Yeah, to kick it in. Yeah, if you give it a kick, right, then... On a three plus, you aren't going to be able to destroy the terrain feature. It's pretty important. Nice. Um, so, how do you feel about the terrain feature? It's not super strong at the moment. Uh, no, but I feel like it actually it does enough that I care. 
unlike some of the other ones. Like who? Uh, but How it's do... not. Who are you talking badly about? Who are you trash mouthing? Uh, I can't. Do you know what? I can't think what some of them do anymore. But like when that fl- Slanesh one came out the first time, it might as well have just been in the bin. Oh yeah, it's true. Uh, and Black Toby in the chat already seen the secret sauce in there. Not surprised from one of our our German bros. Um, uh, obviously, it's great for uh, summoning tree lords because we're going to be putting our tokens on it to be able to summon our tree lords. Throw out lads. Yeah, throw yeah, uh, and then throw out our tree lords. Right. So there we go. Um, right. So the Trailmaster on War Cockerel. He's our first War Scroll that we're looking at. Okay. Do not forget, yep. he might be a monster. Let me just double check. He is a monster, but he's not a behemoth. <coughs> so you can have okay. up to six of these fellas, James. Uh, yeah, James. Six of these fellas. Okay. Because he's a hero. So we're limited at six. We're limited at six. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he's got 11 wounds with a four up armor save, and he only moves 10 inches. Okay. All right. It's only a cockerel yep. at the end of the day. Uh, he's like not super fight. He's got three attacks, threes and fours, no rend damage one. He's got, um, that's with his uh, as, 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 ascent, ascent, oh my god, ancestral lance, right? Um, and then yep. he's got razor sharp beak, which is uh, five attacks, uh, which hit on threes, wound on threes, rend one d3 damage. And then he has got six attacks with the talons, which is threes and fours, rend one damage one. Um, and then he's got add one to the wound rolls and improve the rend characters to this model's ancestral lance by one if this model made a charge move in the same turn. Um, and then uh, Fortune Favors the Brave, add one to the ward set rolls using those Lucky Scoundrels ability if this model made a charge move in the same turn. Okay. And James, I think I've done the math on this. I think if you use the Lucky lucky Dice roll and get a double, so you get a five up ward. Yeah. And then if it's dinner and you add a four up ward, yeah. although that might only be for barefoot units, I don't have to double check, I haven't checked it. Yeah. Then you could, on check. Check. Ward, you could have him on a three up ward save, but that might not work. Okay, because I haven't checked who's got the barefoot keyword yet. Um, and I apologise uh, to everyone in the chat uh, for like, and anyone watching this back now. I only got this a few hours ago, so I no, haven't done. No, nomad feast man, it, nomad feast masters units benefiting from those lucky scoundrels. So he doesn't have to be a barefoot. He'd be on a three award. A three award save on a double turn. Nice. Okay. Nice. All right. Uh, so then he's got Fortune Favors the Brave. Add one to the wound rolls uh, using those Lucky Scoundrels ability if this model made a charge move um, at the same turn. Okay, so nice. plus one to wound, which would make lots of attacks hit on a wound on threes or twos. Uh, and then um, extra provisions. All friendly Nomad Feastmaster units within three inches of this model. Don't forget this model only costs 200 points. All friendly Nomad Feastmaster units within three inches of this model treat this round as battle round one for the purpose of it's been a long day. So you won't have uh, any of the negatives. Keeps throwing out the dinner. Keeps throwing out the dinner. Yeah, so if you've got a bunch of Nomad Feastmasters around the War Cockerel, the War Cockerel's going to be like, don't worry, we've got your dinner. I don't know where he throws it around from, though. But throwing... you've also got to lose the roll off to throw out extra dinner. In turn, where you lose the roll off to determine, yeah, that's true. That's true. So you might get double turned, get a ward, and then be like, dinner, lads! Dinner, lads! Take out all the food. <laughs> There's a cock just giving out mouthfuls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cockadoodle do is a command ability uh, used during your hero phase. And if you do so, select to model this command ability till the start of your next hero phase, all friendly Nomad Feastmaster units, wholly within 12 inches of the selected model, gain the breakfast ability from the go with your gut trait in addition to any other last meal eaten ability. So James, if you roll dinner for the ward save, you'll also be able to apply breakfast. So you're not going to necessarily want to roll breakfast, unfortunately. And you sometimes well, want... Well, not if you're taking cocks. Well, yeah, exactly. Because then it feels like the command yeah. ability is not going to work uh, in some ways. Now, there's only 200 points. Um, my initial feedback is is that I, I understand that um, there's not necessarily... I wouldn't have mind there being like a fairly fighty melee hero. I, but this is just a this is a an ongoing conversation I've been having in Age Sigma. Might be a show that we do next week or the week after, talking about duelists of the mortal realms, like like your Sigvalds, your Light of Altharians. I really yeah. feel like that there should be more duel type characters. He's only pointed at two hundred points, so he's like he's already cheaper than both of those two characters I just mentioned. Yeah. Um, so uh, and he's fairly quick, and I get he's only a nomad, but like I don't know, I wouldn't mind wouldn't mind him being a little bit more fighty. Um, 
Uh, Black Toby already with the FAQ. Also needs ruling for Archeon's ability to see who gets the next turn. Thank you very much. It does need that. Um, uh, what tome is this? So everyone in the chat can answer the question for me. Uh, that'd be great. So that's your Warcock rule. Trailmasters are tasked with keeping the caravan and the herds protected moving. So we'll do the heroes and then we'll go look at the command traits and artifacts. How's that sound, James? Yeah. It's okay. good with me. Okay. Now we've got the war caravan. This is a this is a beefy boy. Okay. He's not a hero. He's not a hero. The war caravan is not a hero, but it is a behemoth. So max four caravans. Oh. Okay. This is not like anyone from Wakefield. Okay. <laughs> That's a great joke. That's a regionally fantastic joke. You've been saving that all day, and yeah. someone in Derby, someone in Derby right now is dying with laughter listening to that gag. Right, so thank you, everyone. I'm going to take a cup of tea to celebrate. Okay. Oh, you've got old with a cup of tea. I've, I've, do you know what? It's nice. It's not too hot in here now that I can actually drink a cup of tea. Nightmare fuel. Um, uh, so is this canon games which honest war game mode? So it's been made, made uh, written by Darren, for, who's in the chat. His name's Positive Victim. So just to remind everyone about that. Um, so uh, the gastronome war caravan. James, you want to take me through it? Take yeah, me sure, it, baby. Tell me. You tell me. Do you want me to read the story uh, to you? Let's find out. No, what it I'm going to read it to you. All right, go on then. Made from the timbers, blessed with powerful magics, from within the. Oh, having care groves nice. and able to manipulate any terrain to become tra traversable with the trail. Mm. The gastronome caravans transport the nomads in relative safety. They're going to be a rhino across the realms, strengthening the magical veil as they go. Some are outfitted with them with more powerful wards to not only protect the nomads, but also punish those who would threaten the realms biodiversity. So they're eco-warriors. It's a real shame Nathan didn't make it because he's become a real hippie over the past few years. So they're eco-warrior gnomes who love Quite dinner. Quite often found in a woods, I hear, Nathan. <laughs> he's, been, he's found in woods even more recently, which is so yeah. weird. He's been on a, he's Nathan, the Nathan like uh, canon and his <laughs> character arc is really like, <laughs> like long time listeners are going to be like, wow, that's really changed. Um, Okay, so he's got the, uh, what's he got? It's a mount. This unit's crag ibexes attack with their prodigious horns, which is six attacks, fours and threes, rend one, damage one. So those are the little, like, uh, things that pull the caravan. Um, ibex? Yeah. It's a real animal. Well, an ibex? Yeah. It's a so. real animal? I think so, isn't it? Is it? What is it? I think so. I think it's like a goat. The ibis is a hotel. Uh, the ibis is a hotel. Yeah, the ibex is a goat. An ibex is it? Uh, is a any of several species of wild goat distinguished by the male's large recurved horns which are transversely rigid in the front they're generally found in eurasia north africa and east africa the name ibex comes from latin there's a lesson for you i've got a lot of thoughts going through my head <laughs> a lot of thoughts and i don't want to derail this with any debauchery so all i'm going <laughs> to say is like the idea of a beastly chaos army getting a hold of one of them ibexes, <laughs> all sorts of. It's a boy one though, if it's got big horns. What? It's a boy one if it's got big horns. Do you think a beastly chaos scares James? Come on, it's 2022. <laughs> yeah, be That's an ally. Fair. Stop being a foe. Yeah, come on, let's go. Sorry. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, right. So what else have we got going on? So it, so it's got an, it's got an aura. Which it brackets at six wounds, starts with fourteen wounds and a four up uh, armor save, and it's got a uh, embellic alembic shroud, which is twelve inches, and then its movement is only eight inches. Okay, but it does have fifteen yep. short spear attacks. Okay, nice. so the embellic shroud, when nomad feastmasters models within range of this model's em alembic shroud move, they can pass across terrain features in the same manner as if they could fly. In addition, for any Nomad Feastmasters units wholly within range of this model's Alembic Shroud, count as being wholly on or within a terrain feature. Okay. In addition, absolutely love that. A third in addition is phenomenal stuff and makes me really feel like I'm reading a GW tone. Great work there, Darren. Do not apply the cover modifier to save rolls for attacks to target enemy units that are within range of the Alembic Shroud. Okay. So yeah. a third in addition really sells it to me. Okay. In addition, do not apply cover modifier. So you can move across stuff as if you can fly, 
Um, you're uh, in cover, but your enemies aren't in cover. Yeah, and you also count as being wholly within terrain. So that way, you get all the benefits of being within terrain. Yeah. Uh, like, you can't get the character and stuff. Okay. Um, right, the Alembic Overload. This model may fire its Alembic Overload at a visible terrain feature within range, or an enemy unit within range of this model's Alembic Overload. If an attack with Alembic Overload it hits, roll a dice for each enemy model within one inch of that terrain feature. For each model wholly within range of this uh, model's Alembic Overload, for each roll of a six, that model's unit suffers one mortal wound, or two mortal wounds, if uh, the model that is affected by those lucky scoundrels battle trait. Okay? So, yep. pretty amazing. So, there's a terrain feature. 30 skinks are sat on top of it. Right? You pick it. You blow it up. Right? You've got the lucky scoundrels get cracking off. So, that means you're going to do 10 mortal wounds to that unit? Yeah. And I, because it's each model wholly within a top bracket, 0 to 6 wounds, it's 12 inches. So, models wholly within 12 inches. Yeah. Of the caravan. So you could roll a lot of dice. Mm. You could. You could. Okay, very interesting. Uh, you've got Leaping Headbutt. If the hit roll for an attack made by the unit's prodigious horns is an unmodified six, the attack inflicts a mortal wound in addition because of, uh, because of the Ibexes. And then the Ground Transport, ladies and gentlemen. It's Carriage and Overlords of the Ground. Yeah. Or... Told you, a, it's a rhino. Or a Carriage and Overlords, the Nomad Feastmasters of the Sky. You tell me. <laughs> Right, this model may be garrisoned by up to sixteen. James, don't worry, you're fifteen lads are oh, safe. Nice. Friendly unmounted barefoot models that are not a war machine. Even though it is not a terrain feature, units can be set up uh, in this model. Models cannot join or leave this model's garrison if made a move in the same phase. Uh, they can join uh, or leave before it does so. Models in the garrison are not counted towards gaining control of an objective and attack by event weapons within range this model can target either this model or a unit in its garrison so it's basically a garrison it's basically a garrison yep. it's a mobile moving garrison a moving garrison and uh, it does the same thing as a ko boat where if it blows up you roll some dice and on a one a lad poofs off of course of course of course so uh and how much does the caravan again points wise james did you have it uh i will a caravan is where is it? Two hundred and twenty points. Okay, pretty cheap for a transport, right? Yeah. Because what put you could do. Fifteen lads in there. So do you know what I would do? Is I'd put my my fifteen lads inside. I'd put them inside unmatched conquerors. Yeah. I'd take yeah. two war caravans with fifteen lads in each. They'd all be an unmatched conquerors. Yeah, I stick on an objective. You charge me. You think you'd won. Then I get the boys out, and I'll be like, 45 on an objective, baby. You're fucked. And they'll be like, and you double turn, and then they've all got four at ward. And then I do that, right? Fucking dinner. So, only if, only so, if we've had dinner. Come on. Yeah, you, you we've, think had, we've, we've had dinner all the dinner. time. It's because it's late. And then, and then, the swan comes. <laughs> the fucking. It's sick. It's sick time. The swan comes. It's sick. <laughs> so excited for this one. This one's rubbish. We stop. Okay, we just stop the book. We just stop, and we instead, live on air, write an angry email to everyone that worked on this battle turn. Okay, all right. Uh, we've got some. Uh, we've got the the Gashanum guard, which we're not going to talk about at the minute because uh, we're still doing characters. Let's do the battle line because we need. To no, I want to do about... Mephisto heart stuff. No, we need to talk about the regular lads so we know Boo. what's going. Boo. We've got to Thought do we were it. Doing heroes then battle traits. We we we're mo we're just jumping around. Okay, like I'm a professional battle turn reviewer. I can do what I like. Yeah, like someone the other Mephisto day was like, I don't like it. I don't like the way they jump around. Happy. You what do you say? Mephisto's not happy. We'll go back to him. Right, the nomad. Dro okay, the nomad drovers are fifteen lads. The battle oh, line bros. Okay, kings of the book. I'm King loving that save. <laughs> save dash like our hopes. Save nilpois. Right, uh, they move four inches. They've got one wound, and their bravery five. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I like how read read me the tale, James. Read me the tale. Every member of the nomadic community is expected to respect, work, and fight for the trail. Banding together, they can often get carried away 
and are difficult to manage. But together, that enthusiasm can achieve great things. Okay. All Nomad Feastmaster armies require 250 <laughs> Nomad Drovers. <laughs> that wasn't it. <laughs> that was a lie. <laughs> just lost my whole shit <laughs> i love i love the wargaming community everyone's like oh there's loads of really unique and interesting units in there and someone's like but what if i take 255 little developers and someone's like oh that's not what we plan for you to do you pricks i want 255 little fellas <laughs> right okay the printer does go burr you could probably that probably cost you about eight quid in resin uh, all right okay so what are they equipped with all right so the unit of Nomad Drovers has any number of models, but it doesn't. It has 15. Uh, the unit is armed with one of the following weapon options. Drover bows and pots and spoons, or club mauls and bracken shields, or short spears and bracken Ooh. shields. Okay? Okay. So let's see what the shield does. Nomad Drovers with a bracken shield have a save characteristic of 6+. plus. So with a missing oh. shield, it would be a 5+. plus. Um, Tanks. Like, huh? Tanks, these lads. Absolute tanks right then you the get chat. them in some terrain they get a five up save then we give them mystic shield they ignore rend then they've had dinner and you get double turned and then they've got a four at ward and then the cocks there putting it stuff in their mouth yeah. and they get some breakfast <laughs> so, sorted 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 that's a perfect review uh, i like it all the the chat terrorists like stab got plus and retro are already being like 255 little lads plus one swan lad. I'm in. Um, anyway. Okay. Swan, swan, good or riot. That's what good I want. or riot. <laughs> okay. Forget not partying. There'll be a riot over this swan. <laughs> Going to call it Liz. <laughs> right. Okay. So six up armor save. So if you decide to go for the six up armor save, then you can either have a short spear, which is a two inch range, one attack, fives and fours, no rend damage one, or a club and maul. Uh, one attack, fours and fours, no rend damage one. Yeah? Nice. Um, they get plus two in cover, so four plus with the shield. Um, uh, they do get plus two, but not to their save characteristic, to their armor save. So it still would only be a five up uh, and then ignoring one pip and rend, right? Is what it would be. Um, uh, so yeah, if you gave them a, sh a shield, because they'd be in cover, right? Because if you had a caravan and these guys weren't yeah. even inside the caravan, they were next to the caravan, they'd have a... They'd have a... Um, uh, a five up armor save because they'd be yep. in cut. They'd be oh no, they'd have a four up armor save, but not four up. They'd have a five up, ignoring red one. They'd have, red one. They'd have yeah, they have a four up, but a five up characteristic, right? Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, if you go for a club or maul, you get one attack, fours and fours, no red damage one. But if you go for the drover bow, yeah, instead, and then you have some pots <coughs> and spoons, you can have one attack, fives and fives, no red damage one. So they're pretty goblin and no saves. And no saves, if you go for that. Uh, but they do have a loudmouth. They do have a loudmouth, uh, who is one in every 50 models could be a loudmouth. And while this unit includes any loudmouths, during the charge phase, roll dice each time you allocate a wound or a mortal wound. This unit on a 3+, plus, that wound or mortal wound is negated. So, basically, he's like the first lad that gets knocked out. You know when you're in the pub, this is a very English battle term, by the way, when you're at the pub and you've been like, and there's like one lad just giving it the big one, and yep. then someone just fucking clocks him. They just then, don't get shot. They zigzag when they're running at Overwatch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, and do you want to take me through the rest of the two uh, unit champs? Yeah, Oops. then there's Rabaloomph. Each oh. successful hit roll for an attack made with weapons used by this unit scores two hits on the target instead of one. While there is 20 or more lads. 45 lads. 45 lads. Just reinforcing it. So, uh, so, so you get exploding. So you get exploding hits. Yeah. You know they're bravery five. Doesn't matter. Okay, perfect. Okay, so forty-five lads. The swan will make them battle shock me, and I reckon. I reckon that's absolutely correct. I, I'm waiting to get to the swan, and read three pages of rules. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fish in the chat says, if there's a loudmouth, uh, is there uh, is there also a hold me back ability? Sacrifice the loudmouth to pass a battle shock. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a great ability. All right, okay, so he's got an old foot. One model in this unit can be an old foot. Add one to the attacks characters to that model's weapons. And a trail flagger. One every five models, uh, 15 models can be a trail flagger. Add one to the bravery characteristic of any friendly barefoot units within six inches. So, um, uh, so wait, add one to the bravery characteristic of friendly barefoot units within six inches of any. Oh, so you can't oh. stack. You can't stack them. I was like, I wanted to have like 10 of them together and just be like, plus six bravery. Well, plus 10, that would be obviously. Bravery 42. Yes, yes. <laughs> How many That's fucking what we flags want. are around here? This is great. Okay, so now we know what our battle line lads do. We've got some archer boys, if we wanted yep. to, right? Or we've got some like, like basic Phoenix Guard units, essentially. Yep. Like identical in many ways. They're 100 points for 15 wounds. 100 points for 15 wounds. Not bad. Bargain. Not bad. Okay. All right. We'll go back to looking at our characters now. Sorry about that, James. Apologies. Yeah, if well be. Yeah. <laughs> Mephisto Heartstock. Okay. No, we're not doing. We have to do the chef apparently before we do Mephisto Heartstock. Okay. So the head chef. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you to Il Il Pispy uh, for subscribing. <laughs> um, oh, bonjour. Uh, so he, the head chef has only got a six up armor save. As he's probably, just chef. well, he's probably also like like a borderline alcoholic with a coke addiction because he's a chef. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> and any chefs in the chat prove me wrong. Um, but he moves four inches. He's got five up, uh, five wounds, and six up armor save, and he's bravery six. Um, now, uh, do you want to read the story, James? Uh, yeah, he's the busiest of all nomads. It is a head chef's responsibility to keep the gastronomic caravans fed and the great feast recipes safe for future generations. In battle, they can be found in the thick of the fighting, inspiring those around them with tales of the previous great feasts and those great feasts yet to come. It seems counterintuitive that you expect, like, important feedy lad would be smacking people with his pot instead of preparing dinner, especially when everyone's getting hangry. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Being a head chef, like, he's, it feels like he's actually the army leader. Yeah, maybe they know they get hungry and then they get better. So he's there with his pot, smelling good. So people are like, fucking hell, I'm hungry. Oh, I see. Better. So he basically just wafts a pot around to get yeah. them really fucking mad as shit. I love that idea. Yeah. Okay, well, um, uh, some little bits, James. Uh, he is a priest as well, so he can oh. take curse or heal. Okay, waste well, not, one not. When his food is your religion. When food is your religion, he is a priest. That's correct. Uh, is this an order about him? It is. It is order. Of course, they're allowed a priest if it's destruction. No priest, obviously. Uh, right, okay. So he's got some special abilities. Waste not, want not. Uh, the police uh, may have some more ability of nomad hot pot units within three... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, we need to look at hot pot units, James, before we do anything else. <laughs> it's just below. It's just below. We're right there. Okay, we're going to do the hot pot unit first. Cooking is... at great temperatures while using some of the realm's most toxic fauna and the secretions of her most poisonous creatures. Nomads have perfected the art of combining scents with the destruction. Enemies hit by these concoctions are scolded instantly, with further distractions and ramifications depending on the blend of ingredients used. Nearby nomads are emboldened by the smell of that amante Emanate. from the... You what? Emanate. Oh, emanate. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> from the parts themselves and their metabolisms respond to the irresistible sensations see this is why when i meet anyone like if i'm getting a taxi somewhere they're like oh what do you do for work or i'm traveling somewhere so like what do you do for work and i tell them and they're like oh what's that like and i'm like have you got a kid they're like yeah i'm like then you should fucking get your kid to do it because you learn reading comprehension math yeah like learning how to deal with people with like real social problems like all of these things are something you'll learn when being involved with warhammer um, there you go. Uh, like, uh, so yeah, so okay, so these guys throw dinner. Is that what we're about to learn? Yeah, bit of artillery. Okay. Twenty-four so, inch range. Okay, so this is a war machine. Okay, so you're okay. only gonna be able to take four of them max. Okay, so this is leftovers. Twenty-four inch range, one attack hits on the three, and then star to wound, star rend, star damage. Okay, so. Uh, let's talk about it. There's no problem a good meal won't fix. A unit that is hit by leftovers is affected, 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 by one of the following abilities. Until the start of the next hero phase, uh -oh. depending on the last meals eaten by the Nomad Hot Pot from the go-with-your-gut trait. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
Um, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so breakfast. Subtract two from the move characteristic for that unit and subtract two from that unit's run and charge rolls. Okay, slow them down. Hold on. To the start, uh, a unit hit by leftovers is affected by one of the following abilities. To the start, your next hero phase, depending on the last meal eaten. So we're slowing people down by hitting them in the face with a hash brown. <laughs> or, yeah, or hash brown to the face. Hash brown poof, straight in the face. Yeah. Question. And if... then you want to eat the potato, so you're too busy eating the potato. Can't can't move fast. Can't run. Can't charge. I think I think you uh, I think you're able to just stack this ability as well. Because it doesn't say you can't oh. stack it. Nice. Like I don't think it does. Uh, so lunch, subtract one from the wound rolls for attacks made by that unit. So if you're on lunch. And then dinner, subtract one from the save characteristic of that unit. The same unit cannot suffer from each of the breakfast, lunch, or dinner more than once in the uh, same turn. Boo! Boo, there we go. boo. Okay. So um, do you choose until... So you don't get to choose, right? Okay. No, it's whichever one you roll. But then there's the police there. May I have some more rule? Oh, wow. Any last Which meals? Which links to our head chef. Okay, any last meals eaten by the Nomad Hot Pot uh, from the Go Fast Food Gut Tray? Oh, f oh, fucking hell, what? Any last meals eaten by the Nomad Hot Pot? So breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Yeah. From the Go With Your Gut Tray, affect any Which Nomad Feast Mask units wholly within 12 inches of this model, except for other Nomad Hot Pot units. Any last meals eaten from the Go With Your Gut Tray? Which is the the base one, right? Yeah. Any last meals eaten by Nomad Hot Pot go with your gut tray. Affect any Nomad Feastmaster units wholly than 12 inches model, except for other Nomad Hot Pot units. What does that do? So they have an aura of the effect of the meal they last ate. Yeah, so, I think so. Uh, Just keep reading. Uh, oh, okay. here we go. We need to we need to do the head chef now. Okay, all right. Now we need to do the head chef. Let's unlock the code. <laughs> Hold on. There's another one. A uh, unit that is hit by leftovers also suffers D3 mortal wounds. Okay, just important to know. So D3 so mortal wounds. So they actually do D3 mortal wounds and a non-stackable... Non-stackable debuff. That's the one. Right. Now we're okay. back to the head chef. James, read it to us. Okay. The police, sir, can I have some more ability? So this is where we got to. Yeah. Uh, so he uses waste not want not because he's just stood there. Yeah. Uh, it affects any nomad. Hang on. The ability of the nomad hot pot units within three of this model affects nomad feast masters units wholly with eighteen of that model, except for other nomad hot pot units. Of the nomad hot pot units within three inches of this model affects any nomad feast masters units wholly within eighteen inches. Yeah, but I still don't know what it does. Okay, out. let's keep going. We'll get back. It's an aura. Okay. okay. Always hangry. Okay, so the, the chef, always hangry. So instead of anything else, he's always hangry. Uh, in addition, in your hero phase, you can select another Nomad Feastmaster unit within three of this unit until the start of the next hero phase. They're hangry as well. Whoa! You can spend it during the hero phase and if you do such a number of uh, within until the start of the next hero phase, replace the last meal with hangry. Wow! So he's just waving that pot, annoying people. Oh wow! You just oh okay okay. So it's the always hangry one. And how close you have to be within three inches though? Within three, but not wholly within three. Okay, it's interesting. So you right. just get them forty-five lads, put him in the middle. Yeah. And then yeah. you've got, um, uh, then you've got the. You can use his command ability, so there'll be some fine dining should you survive this one, lads. You can use his command ability during your hero phase. If you do so, select one Nomad Feastmasters unit wholly within 12 inches model with a command ability. To the start of your next hero phase, replace the last meal eaten from the go with your gut trait for the selected unit with another meal from eating from your last choice. So, James, if you do end up rolling breakfast and you want dinner, you can yep. give them dinner. Nice. So, there we go. So, we can just multiple stack the hot pots with dinners and shoot them all right okay so multiple stack oh i see what you do so you use the command ability on a hot pot and then yep. you change because you can only fire breakfast shots yeah right because you've rolled breakfast but then you use the command ability from the chef to change what's in the hot pot and then fire yep. the hot pot and it also gives a different aura around 
Yeah. Right, and then it projects an aura. So you roll breakfast, all of your hot pots are giving out the breakfast buff, but then you yeah. go, your head chef's like, do you know what? Stick some dinner in that one, fire your dinner, and also there's an AOE 18-inch Bubble aura, of dinner. A bubble of dinner. So you keep firing dinner off one and give them all a ward save. I'm so happy my go. girlfriend actually understands what I do for work because that sentence and is truly the craziest thing I've ever said. So they get some other weird buffs. Oh, but I can't yeah. remember what they are right now. All right, perfect. Okay, all right, great. Okay, so you do D3 more wounds, you apply debuffs, and then you give out auras to your little fellas, which is quite yeah. good. Because that means you... Because, wait, couldn't we also do something with our uh, with our fella? <coughs> we can make them... So we can make them hangry. Yep. While also giving them breakfast and dinner yep. on a double turn. Yep. Right? On a double turn, that would be pretty good. Right. Right. And the head chef, 100 points. And how much are the hot pots? And the hot pot. Uh, 140. Oh, okay. Because so then... 240 points for one of each. Yeah. And okay. then blast. And then you've got Cockadoodle Do. So if you go back to the Trailmaster, he's got the aura of everyone has breakfast. Oh. So if you wanted to turn one, you could get all your hot pots to fire breakfast or do a breakfast. If you rolled lunch, you could do breakfast, lunch, and dinner through nice. all the hot pots. Right? You need three hot pots, though. I reckon you need. How much is a hot pot? 140. That's a lot of points for a hot pot, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just put. Do you know what? Just give the lad some. Uh, uh, pot noodles. Let them feed themselves. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's what that that cock's doing. Putting cock, putting cock supplies in people's right. mouths. So we've worked out what happens with the hot pots and also the yeah. head chef. Right, so, James Mephisto Harston. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Come on, foremost baby. of contemporary head chefs, Mephisto Harstock is the maestro atop the very pinnacle. Of culinary artistry. Yeah. Peers from all across the trails will eagerly seek counsel should the opportunity present itself and often leave his genial company dazed and thunderstruck. Wobbling vessels renew with gastronomic zeal. Okay. All so right. he moves three inches. This is a so, this not is, so is this based off any. Like, is it based off Gordon Ramsay, do you reckon? Um, it's Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver, not Salt Bay. No. Not Salt Bay. He's not doing the right pose, he's just got a big cleaver look. Okay, so Hartstock, not a hard foot or half foot. Yeah. Okay, so Mephisto Hartstock, okay, he's rubbish in fight, so you don't need to bother reading that. <laughs> right, waste not, want not, right? So that's the same as the other lad, waste not, want not, isn't it? Because he's a chef and also yeah. a priest. Yep. Okay. When so food is your religion. When food is your religion, exactly. He's got the okay. always hangry ability. Yeah, which we've seen. Yeah. Um, He's uh, chef special, isn't he? That's a new ability. What does it do, James? So once per battle in your hero phase, you can select one Nomad Hot Pot unit within three of this model. Apply an additional last meal eaten to the selected Nomad Hot Pot for the go with your gut trait until the start of your next hero phase. So he can double up the dinner and shoot it. He can double a dinner? Yeah, once per battle. They get both, I think. So an additional last meal eaten. So you just put breakfast and dinner in a pot. Go. Wow. Wow. He's like an auto-include, I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> well, feels like it. Points. He's also got... That's one spicy meatball. So he's a, uh, maybe he's an Italian chef because he sounds Italian. Sounds now. it. Sounds it. Uh, so Italian when those... cooking, Ita Italian cooking, James, so good, yeah, so incredibly good that in like the the forties, people were like, "Doesn't matter what you've done before now. It's great dinner. This is great dinner. We'll ignore everything <laughs> you did." There you go. Say so. any recent in any recent history, um, but please continue. So then he's got one spicy meatball. So when those lucky scoundrels battle trait applies to nomad hot pot units, so the uh, double turn thing, yep. uh, within three of him, 
their surf piping hot ability causes your unit hit by leftovers to take d6 mortal wounds instead of d3 wow okay so if you include mephisto harstark right um yep. which is pretty amazing uh, but you gotta get a double turn for that you gotta get a double turn but then all your hot pots would be doing d3 damage uh, d6 mortal yep. wounds and he's then got there'll be some fine dining lads so the same ability as our head chef of course I mean, now obviously, obviously. Uh, Mephisto has 20 points more than a head chef. He is an auto include for hot pots doing decent. Can't cook without wounds. Mephisto. So, what are we doing now? We're doing Mephisto, yeah, four hot pots, yeah, yeah, and then just launch as many of those things across the board as we can. Uh, yeah, okay, all right, happy with that. So, well done, Mephisto Harstock, super fan. Uh, so now we can start to look at some of the oh no, I think that's no, we haven't talked about the head wizard. Or the swan. Or the... Is the swan a character? Yeah, the swan's a named character, I think. No. Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Um, right, so the hedge hermit has got four <coughs> wounds with a six-up save. Seemingly at random, any nomad can hear the call of Garan. Becoming distant and estranged from their kin, they eventually leave the gastronomic caravans to tend the Harbinger groves that secretly line the trails. So they kind of get corrupted by the forest. Yeah, right. or they become just big hippies. Um, oh, what? We found Nathan. Uh, yes, this is where Nathan is. Nathan has become a head. Now that explains the story arc. Nathan has become a hedge hermit. Oh there we my go. God. Solved. Okay, so as always, terrible in a fight because it's a character in Age of Sigmar. Um, right, so soil affinity is an ability that they have. They're a hero and they're a wizard. And uh, it doesn't say how many casts it has. Uh, no. Is he a wizard? Yeah, he is. He's got the wizard keyword, but it doesn't say if he's a one or two cast wizard anywhere. I think, which is something that needs to be included. I think maybe. Um, but infinite, infinite cast, infinite cast. <laughs> you assume one, as it's not mentioned. If, but I'm no, sure. If you can play him fast, infinite cast. Infinite rules cast. is written. Yeah. Right, anyway, so um, this model may choose to ignore the effects of scenery rules or abilities on scenery war scrolls. Ooh, okay. Pretty fun. So uh, scenery rules don't affect him. Oh, yeah. So then Beast of Chaos. No extra rend. No extra rend. On his six up armor save. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> right, okay. Tree Friend. Friendly Tree Lord, Tree Lord Ancients, or Spirit of Dirty models may be garrisoned by this model. He goes in their butt, right? And it's wait, like, even though it's not a terrain feature, oh, the, the hedge wizard I'm goes in. The... That there's a wizard going in a tree butt, and there's a cock giving out full mouths. I'm not concerned about any of that. This model model cannot join or leave that model's garrison if that model has made a move in the same phase. This model in that model's garrison is not counted towards gaining an, a control of an objective. <laughs> I absolutely love that he goes inside his butt. This is great news for everyone. <laughs> Okay, like immediately I want to Especially the tree. Especially, right? Yeah, Dirty's face, all smiley. Right, an attack made by a weapon that is in range of model can target either. So basically it's a garrison. Okay, it's a yeah. garrison. Okay, and then he's got Frondensical Refuge. Proud of myself. Frondensical Refuge is a spell with a casting value of six. It's successfully cast. Friendly Nomad Feastmasters units, wholly within 12 inches, are treated as being wholly on or within a terrain feature until the start of your next hero phase. So it's like another way of making a unit be inside terrain, basically, with the spell. So we've got a command ability, an aura from the caravan, and now we've got a spell to help with the terrain, basically. Uh, yeah. So that's what our hedge hermit does. And he's obviously got access to the spell lore as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, uh, I don't think we've got any more wizards. Hold on. No, I don't think we've got any more wizards. So should we take a look at the spells, James? Uh, sure. Okay. Um... Oh, uh... no, no, we do have a wizard. Who? We have Arwen Jacks, son of the Jade Forest. Oh, he's our tree lord. Okay. Uh, all right. So Arwen Jacks, son of the Jade Forest, has got 14 wounds with a three-up save. Oh, we also have Yanella, who's the swan, but th that's last. We're doing that last. All right, then we'll do... Okay, we'll do Arwin, Arwin Jack, Son of the Jade Forest, then. Yeah. Okay, are you ready to do Arwin Jack, Son of the Jade Forest? Arwin Jax is the Jade Forest's first son of the New Age. 
revered by the nomads as confident and staunch ally, a witness to a thousand winters. Mm-hmm. Arwen Jax's towering majesty displays traces of a vast age. Patches of dried and curled bark, spots of diseased leaves, and a persi- uh, who knows, L- lean or bare testament to his antiquity. His lower branches droop in sorrow for all that he has witnessed, and from the pain of withholding the secret of the nomads from his kin. Okay. Din, 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 din. Okay, okay. Right, so let's talk about what he does. Um, he's got something called Blood Nourishment, which is an 18-inch range. He's got Nature's Vengeance, uh, which is his attack in melee, which is three attacks, three threes, uh, Ren 2 damage four, and then an Impaling Talon. Okay, he's a wizard that can cast two spells. Well, that's it. It's the best book. It's the best book ever written. It's the best book ever written. <laughs> it's a tree lord ancient. That's a two cast wizard. Pack it up, boys. Right, we've Let's done all ahead. we needed. Yeah, we've done. No, it. we haven't done the swan. Keep going. Yeah. Um, okay, so. So uh, he's got a special monstrous action uh, that he can carry out instead of another one. You pick one enemy unit within three and roll a dice. On a three plus, he makes them strike last. Okay, so that's what a regular tree lord, tree lord ancient has anyway. He's okay. just got a spirit pass, which means he can teleport through wild woods, um, right. which is the same as a tree lord, tree lord ancient. Um, but then he's also got this this blood nourishment ability, which I'm interested. If an attack from a melee weapon carried out by a friendly Sylvaneth unit wholly within the range of this ability slays an enemy hero or monster while that Sylvaneth unit is wholly on... Or within a terrain feature, add a guardian counter to that terrain feature. Now, now we get to find out how we get the guardian counters. <laughs> there we okay. go. Um, so, so let me get this right. So, if an attack by a melee weapon it, uh, carried out by a friendly similar hero uh, or monster um, is wholly within a terrain feature. Okay, so you, there's some ways to get them within range of a terrain feature, right? You can cast yep. a spell. You can use the aura from the caravan. Um, and then they'll count as being in the terrain feature. So then basically, if your big Durthu, a Tree Lord Ancient, ends up thwacking someone with this guy nearby, then you'll add a Tree Lord counter to uh, a piece of terrain nearby, I think, basically. Um, okay. And then add one of the attacks characters to this unit's uh, Nature's Vengeance while it's holding within the terrain feature. So it'll have five attacks. Uh, no, sorry, four attacks. And then spir- and it has that silent c- communion. Yeah, Once per battle in your hero phase, if this unit is on the battlefield, you can set up one Awaken Wildwood terrain feature uh, on the board. There you go. Yeah, okay, so you get a Wildwood. So there's a there's a, there's an opportunity for you to get a Wildwood on the board and then teleport between the Wildwoods and stuff. So that's yep. nice. So it's like a Trilor Ancient. Okay, that's kind of interesting, which means like... So that's how I get my, my counters... And he is uh, 340 points. Sugar. So he is more expensive than 45 little lads. He is. But don't forget, he can have a hedge wizard that's up his butt. A hedge hermit right up his butt. <laughs> he can. So but I think I'd take the 45 lads. Pop them up my butt. Put them up my butt. Okay. Uh, right, so we'll do the trail thief and then the swan. Okay. Right. Fine. Okay. Considered lucky amongst a race known for its incredible luck, trail thieves are the eyes and ears of the gastronomic caravans outside of the protective veil of the trail, able to steal the eggs from a griffin's nest or the eggs from an enemy's dinner plate within their camps. They sow confusion and doubt amongst the nomads' enemies well before battle is joined. Okay. Nice. So any fans of Root... Yeah, this is very much like having the weasel or whatever it is that gets all the weapons. The badger? The raccoon. The raccoon, yes. Okay, so any any competitive root fan players out there. Uh, right, so a trail thief. Um, Not very fighty. Correct. So we can skip all of that. Uh, what is uh, ability, but James? I, I do like his... Smoke me a kipper. I'll be back for breakfast. Arnold Rimmer. Instead of setting up this model on the battlefield, he goes to one side. And you can set it up in a concealed position. If you do so, select one of the following missions and say the number of turns this model will attempt the selected mission. Okay. So, 
Master of the Whip and Repartee. Your opponent loses a triumph roll. You gain that triumph roll. Okay. Some really good stats at the minute, James. If you ever, if you end up with a 1950 list in Age of Sigmar, then you have an 89% chance to be able to get a triumph. No, okay. no, that's not right. 98.1. 98.1. Nice. Which is crazy. Which means you can steal there. But that does mean that probably most people aren't going for triumph rolls. So I probably wouldn't choose Master of the Whip and the Repartee. So let's move on. Okay. That's a, that's a no for uh, me. His command of the realm directives is uncanny. Once per battle when your opponent receives a command point, your opponent loses that command point and you gain it. Yeah, that's okay in the right matchups. You get to choose this at the beginning of the game though, right? So you can kind of tail it to who you're fighting against. So that's not bad in the right situation. Especially some... I don't know if there are armies that are really like CP resource heavy at the moment. Um, but like, whatever. Right, it's How good. come he's a genius? Don't ask me. A randomly selected artifact of power carried by one of your opponent's hero keywords can no longer be used. If it was used to enhance their weapon, the weapon reverts back to its normal form. At the start of the first battle round, after determining who has the first turn, roll a dice and add the number of turns that the model uh, will attempt to select a mission on a roll of six plus to select a mission is successful. Oh, okay. So that's how you complete the mission. I would always choose how come he's a genius, don't ask me. That would be yep. my... Every turn. Every turn. Every, I choose that yep. every time. <clears throat> every time. So the model cannot be set up on the battlefield until after the number of turns that this model will attempt the selected mission. After which, at the end of your movement phase, you can set this model up on the battlefield more than six away from any enemy units. During the start of your hero phase, if this model is still in a concealed position, your opponent may roll a dice. On a 5+, plus, this model loses a wound as it tries to evade capture. If this model loses its last wound before entering the battlefield, it counts as slain. And is the Trail Thief unique? No. Oh, I... maybe on the points. Uh, it'd be on the points, is what I would say. I was going to say this model always counts as being affected by those lucky scoundrels battle he's not but okay, he so, cannot be your general okay so he's always going to have a five up ward if you have had dinner oh uh, maybe always have a five up ward i think always have a five up ward interesting interesting okay so he's like a little little unique little piece that you've got in your army okay so, so you just roll it you're like keeping it off the board for three turns hoping to roll a six take an artifact pop on do no damage, die a hero's death. Yeah, so on turn three it'll be a four plus. Yeah, yeah 110 die. points. That's a lot of points to do not a lot. Yeah, I'd rather have um, 15 more lads. My mate, um, the head wizard? Mephisto he heart stop. I mean, obviously, we, I mean, we, we now we're just arguing about what we're taking. We've obviously got <laughs> Mephisto four hot pots. We haven't even, we're not even arguing about that at the moment. I think Mephisto, one hot pot, all the lads. No, because you definitely have got three times... You're definitely taking three times 15 lads in caravans. Unmatched conquerors. Yeah. Fine. But that's not enough lads. You can take more lads. I'm just saying that's, okay. the, that's the key part. That's right, key. come on. Let's do the important one. Right, the Yanella fucking Lightfoot. swan. Okay, the swan. Yanella Lightfoot. Okay. Ready? Do you want me to read it? No, I'm going to read it. Okay, go for it. Yanella, number one fan, yep. until I read this war scroll. Riding her giant swan, yep. Yanella travels between the trails of Guyan and beyond guiding those gastronomic caravans away from danger. Sick. As whimsical and unpredictable as nature, those in her presence become fully committed to the protection of the great herds and fight those that would threaten their way of life with renewed vigour. Okay, so she's a hero. She's a wizard, and she's uh, obviously you know Lightfoot. Okay, so she can. This unit can attempt to cast D three spells in your hero phase and attempt to unbind two spells in the enemy hero phase. Ooh, the magic ebbs and wanes. I assume she's terrible in combat. That is correct. So we don't have to read that. Um, this unit can fly. Uh, Twelve wounds and a five up save. Her move characteristic changes, and she's bravery eight. How Brave. many wounds is she? Uh, how many points is she? Uh, 240, 240, 240, 240, 240, 240, 240, 
Holy shit balls. Roger Castro, thanks for resubscribing. What is it? 12 rooms on 5 percent Oh boy. Okay. 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 It's going to be fine. Okay. So, right. uh, combat, we won't talk about. That doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter. Shimmering she feathers. She gets a random amount of spells. Yeah. Use this table below for the save characteristic of this unit. Ignore modifiers, positive or negative, when making save rolls. Protect the target of this unit. In addition, this unit is treated as having a save characteristic of 4 plus for the purposes of abilities. So, rend of an attacking weapon. So, because they've got shimmering feathers on the swan, because it's a war swan, magical swan. So, so her save gets better the, the more bigger rend. the rend. So if you've got Ren 0, you've got a save characteristic of 5+. plus. But if you've got Ren 1, you have a save characteristic of 4+. plus. Yeah, if you've got a Ren of minus 5, you've got a save of 0. But then doesn't the Ren apply? So she just always has a 5-up wall. Yeah, I think the point up... is she's just got always got a 5-up save. Well, no, because you could Mystic Shield her. So then she would always have a 5-up, but she would always have a 4-up. Yeah. So then you could all out defense. So you'd always have a four up ignoring oh, ignoring modifiers. She's ethereal. So she's a five up ethereal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Honestly, while I love the table, just write five up ethereal on it. That, that's fine. And, for and a four up for the purpose of abilities. Yes. There that are abilities that are, are based on the armor save. Okay. Right. Following. Okay. Uh. The better the oh. rend, apparently we're wrong. The, the better, better the save. save. Okay, so it is. So she, it should be. So a zero. So her save's better the higher your rend. So if you hit with something big and punchy, she good. She tanky. If you throw ungors at her, she die. Yeah. Well, no, because yeah, but you would still apply the rend, right? So yeah, if you if you had Borgors as Kevin said in the chat, I read three. She has no, because it's save. ignoring. So it's ignore the table ignores modifiers, and Rem would be a modifier. Oh. So it means at minus three, she's got a two up save. At zero, so no rend, not very good. Minus right. one, four plus. I minus two, it. three plus. There we go. I get it. Okay, so if you whack her with something big, then zero up save. But yeah. if you just shoot her with like any old shit, dead. And then if she's had dinner, better ward. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, the ward save as well, yeah. Okay, right. so she's got a humongous appetite. Humongous, humongous even. Yeah, this unit is always affected by, by the breakfast, lunch, and dinner last meals. Wow. Eating everything from the go of your gut. And this model may, may ignore any or all modifiers from the it's been a long day. So it doesn't even get hangry later on in the... Doesn't get hangry. Yeah. Eating all its dinner, breakfast, and lunch. Oh, this one makes a mother proud. <laughs> uh, in addition, before the roll-off to decide who takes the first turn at the start of the battle round, you must say whether you plan to take the first turn or the second turn. If you lose the roll-off and your opponent decides to take the first or second turn, when you said you plan to take the first or second turn, then breakfast, lunch, and dinner, last meal, eat, meals eaten from the go with your gut trait, affect any Nomad Feastmasters units wholly within range of this model's humongous appetite range. So, if, so, so me and you are playing, we roll off. And before we roll off, I go, I'm going first. And then we roll, and you go, now. Nah, I won. I'm going first. And then all my models, within 18 of this unit, get all the dinners. Okay, so I love that. Side note, what's the deal with swans at the minute? Like They're, they're big and aggressive. No, because previously, you weren't allowed to, like, you weren't allowed to fight a swan. Still can't fight a swan. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Also, you'd lose. I, 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 I'm of no doubt that I would lose to a swan. I just don't know what the current... Again, people not English. There's, a, there's, there's something to do with the monarchy and swans. So important to note that, like... This is, it's a fair question. I just don't currently know. Why would you fight a swan? Again, I'm not saying I would fight a swan. I'm just wondering what the current rules are. You might fight this swan because it will be attacking you. Yes. Okay. Oh, they're protected uh, by the realm. Okay. Apologies. It's okay. also got Dawn's Fortune. 
if yeah. this unit is on the battlefield during the first battle round, the lucky scan scoundrel's ability applies to all Feastmasters units. Uh, if this unit is on the battlefield during the first battle round, so that means the double turn ability immediately yeah. applies. She kind of yeah. feels like an auto include at the minute. Yeah. Not gonna lie. And then Sanguine Sundering. Yeah. Oh, it's a spell. Casting value of seven. Select an enemy unit within 18 until the start of your next hero phase at the end of the combat round. Make a battle shot test for the selected unit. And any abilities that mean that the selected unit does not take a battle shot test do not affect it. Right. Right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So if you've got something low bravery, you can always make them run. Okay. All right. That's interesting. So what do we think of Yanella Lightfoot? How do you feel about the Swan now you've read it through? 10 out of 10. Ah, uh, I agree. Like, feels pretty auto included to me. Swan, to 250 lads. Swan. What about Hot Pots, bro? No, they're gone now. That's your list. Oh, you're getting rid of it. Get rid of I'm it. No Swan hot... and 250 lads who've all got the ward on turn one. And then turn two, there's a double turn in there. And there's 250 lads on a four at ward just stood in the way. <laughs> doing, waving their hands. Done. Yeah, yeah. It's a swan at all costs. I agree. <laughs> uh, thanks, Owen. So let's, okay. sh should we look at the magic? Well, let's look at the Endless Spells War Scrolls, and oh. then we can go back and look at the magic. Yeah, definitely. So you've got the Spectral Briar Hedge, uh, cast on a five, set up within 18 inches of the caster. Um, it's just a hedge. It's just a hedge. <laughs> it's just a hedge. It's like a little modern wear away hedge. It's just a hedge. It's just a bramble. And I like thicket. the fact, whoever painted these, because I don't know who painted them or whose models they are, but I like the little blue line. Uh, okay, yeah, there is a, it's a magic hedge. The humble magic hedge has hedge. been a haven for many nomad. These magical thickets now know how best to defend their diminutive creators, thwarting enemy strikes while simultaneously allowing the nomads to fight back with renewed confidence. Okay, so increase the range of characteristics of melee weapons to three inches for models in a nomad feastmaster unit while they're within an inch um, of this model. So they probably wouldn't take spears on your on your regular lads now. Yeah, not You're worth it. Not worth it. In addition, reduce the range characteristic of melee weapons of enemy units uh, within three inches to, uh, of this model to one inch. Oh. Oh, okay. Right, okay, nice. Same side as a palisade. Thank you very much. Um, and then thorny defense. Hit rolls for attacks made by melee weapons that target nomad feastmasters within six inches, wholly within. Uh, always fail on an unmodified... Uh, one, two, or three instead of only a one. <gasps> Transhuman. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Transhuman. No bad feet fast. Nice. 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 Only 40 points for that, Spectral Briar Hedge. And set within 18 inches as well, so pretty nice. No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. Okay, the Harbinker's Sentry, right, uh, is cast on six and set up within 12 inches of the caster. Um, and it is a predatory endless spell that moves up to nine inches. Looks like a Tree Lord Ancient. Uh, Earth Shattering Stomps. At the start of the combat phase, roll a dice for each unit within three inches of this model on a four up. They strike last effect applies to that enemy unit. Um, and then it doesn't affect nomads. And then after this endless spell has moved, you can pick a unit within 12 inches of the endless spell for each guardian counter on any terrain feature within three inches of this model. That unit suffers one mortal wound. This ability does not affect nomad feastmasters. So this is like if you're going to run more of a a, a um, tree summoning a tree summoning build, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't want him. I want the little lads. Oh, great question in the chat. What's the math? Wow, wow, D Joe Cryer in the chat. So imagine if we take the swan, right? Yep. And then we put the hedge near the swan. So you're going to be missing on one, twos, and threes. Yeah. The only yeah. issue there is we're reducing the enemy's rent, which makes the swan save better. No, we're, we're not reducing their rent. rent. They're reducing their weapon range. Oh, their range. Oh. Yeah. So oh, yeah. So, and S also swan lives forever. And then also, oh, Swan lives forever. And also, first turn, you're going to have the double turn. So you're going to have a five up ward. You have, I already know this from earlier on that I've seen. Yeah. You've got the ability to have plus one to that ward save. Uh, yeah, because you've had dinner. 
because you've had dinner, right? At, like, never dying. Like, you could put, like, Ren 5 whatever in. You'd be like, oh, I've got zero up save for a ward. also not really killing anything. You're killing nothing. Like, but throwing dinners out like it's, well, like it's a, an English food bank. Well, not this week because they're closed because <laughs> of the Queen. Because um, that's what the Queen hated, the poor eating food. Um, and then uh, the... This is my favourite looking in the spell. Okay. So the, the Detrius, uh, sorry, Detritus Denizen Swarm. However, yeah, should have just been called Buzzy Bumblebee. Uh, should have, yeah, okay. Death and decay are all part of the circle of life. The tiniest creatures play the most important parts. Right, okay. So this is Castle Seven, set within six inches of a terrain feature. Okay, and it's a predator in the spell that can move up to six inches. Right, and it's the same size as Scuttle Tide. Thank you very much. After setting up or moving this model, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of this model and roll six dice for each five plus suffers mortal wound. In addition, your opponent may not re-roll any dice rolls for any unit that suffers any mortal wounds from this ability until the end of the battle round. <sighs> Can't re-roll any dice rolls as a debuff. How do you feel about that? Nice. Yeah. Uh, the Detritus Denizen Swarm is the name for the new uh, for the new name for the YouTube thugs. Thanks, Dan. Love you. Um, uh, hurry up with Strangers Thing Six, please. That'd be great. Um, that's pretty good because you could like drop that on Croak, yeah, out of a terrain feature. So he's got his uh, he's got his Ziggurat. Drop it on Croak and be like, no cogs for you, Croak. And then he'd be like, well, I've got plus five to cast, so I don't care. But, like... <laughs> but still, um, anyway. But can we kill Croak with magic? Can we kill it with magic? Yeah. What magic have we got? Well, we're still doing these. That's all the endless spells, isn't it? No, we have, we've got one more ability for the Detritus Denizen oh. Swarm. Yeah. Where's he bumblebee? Uh, the Scurrying Mass ability does not affect Nomad Feastmaster units. Uh, in addition, uh, so that's the Scurrying Mass ability that we just spoke about. In yep. addition, models in Nomad Feastmaster unit can move across this model in the same manner as a unit that can fly. Okay. Right? So... Uh, not too, not too bothered about the Detritus Denizen Swarm. I think it's good, but more situational. Quite like the Harbinker Sentry. Yeah, love, hedge matter. love the hedge. Yeah, yeah, love hedge the hedge. Matter. Yeah, so you got a swan. You run the swan forward. You drop the hedge down. Then uh, your Tree Lord Ancient with a, a hedge wizard up his butt turns up. Yeah, start smashing things. You throw some dinners at people. Yeah, and then people beat yeah. up your caravans and all your lads get out and be like, this land is mine. Again, a lot like Wakefield. Um, okay, so, it's a great joke. That's a great joke. There's someone, there's someone in the Midlands cry laughing at that joke every time I make it, being like, carry on, Rob. Yeah, like, so, <laughs> let's talk about the, re you want to look at the spells? I don't mind where we're we going. Let's look at the spells. Let's look at the spells, baby. Let's look at the spells. Okay, hold on. I've got to keep scrolling. Spell laws, got it. <sighs> Let me just show page Okay, spell nine. laws. Okay, page nine. Nomad Feastmaster Wizards. Okay, what spells have we got? James, take me through them. Benign Landscape. It has a casting value of six. If it's successfully cast, select a terrain feature within 18 of the model casting until the start of your next hero phase. Add six inches to the range of any abilities or scenery rules affecting that terrain feature. A Nomad Feastmaster's unit wholly within six inches of this terrain feature count as being wholly on or within terrain. Whoa. Okay. Uh, so benign landscape. Okay, so we're going to get more terrain, more ways to do terrain. So the hedge wizard, yep. or um, we can take benign landscape. And we can buff the caravan and make the circle bigger. That's important. Yeah, okay. All right, good. Uh, then I think then we take it up to, I think we take it up pretty high, like 18 inches. I don't think it's 12 yeah. inches. I think it's even bigger. Okay, good. All right. Okay, good spell. Guardian of uh, Gyron. Mm -hmm. Gyron? Gyron? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Uh, it's a spell that has a casting value of five. If it's successfully cast, select a terrain feature within 12 of the caster and add a guardian counter to it. Nice. Okay, so, because we want to try and speed up getting those free tree lords because they're so effective yeah. in game. So, we... Um, <laughs> <laughs> great lads great lads 
Okay, that's good. That's another way of getting a Guardian counter. So that means by turn three, we're popping out a free Tree Lord. Yep. Okay, oh, even earlier than turn three, to be honest, because we can cast a spell, murder something with one of our characters in range of the Blood uh, Aura. Yeah. yeah, so that's going to be like, we could be on, we could have a free Tree Lord turn two. Nice. Just that's what I've always wanted. That's actually pretty good. And then, like, especially because it's your caravan. So, basically, if people charge your caravan, yeah, then you, like, counter charge with your Tree Lord, murder something, yeah, do a couple of spells. Then you've got two Tree Lords, and they were like, I did not know there were Tree, tree Lords in that caravan. That's great. <laughs> um, okay. uh, Nature's Whimsy. Mm -hmm. Nature's Whimsy casts on six. If you cast it, select a terrain feature with a serenary rule. From the mysterious terrain table within 12 of the caster, and then roll a dice. On a one, your opponent may select a different scenery rule from the terrain table and replace it. Okay. On a two, you can roll again for a new scenery rule from the mysterious terrain table and replace it. On a three to six, you may replace, you may pick a different scenery rule from the mysterious terrain table and replace the rule. Any replace scenery rules apply for the duration of the battle. Okay. To change mysterious terrain. Okay. I'm probably going to leave that one at home. But maybe for okay. Arcane, plus one to cast. Okay. Leaves it, of Empathy. Is the Swan a, is the swan a Lawmaster? We don't know. Probably not. Swan should be a Lawmaster. I feel like the Swan should be a Lawmaster. Okay. okay. Uh, leaves of Empathy. Uh, casting value of five. If you cast it, uh, all friendly units wholly within 12 of the cast again, the Nomad Feastmaster's keyword until the start of the next hero phase. In addition, any last meals eaten by the caster for the go with your gut affect all friendly Nomad Feastmasters, nomad feastmasters and friendly units wholly within 12 inches of the caster. So you can have this one, you cast this, any allied tree lords and your lads get all the meals. That's pretty impressive. That yeah. one's pretty good. That's, That's pretty the good. best one so far, I think. Yeah, because then, then you get a ward save yep. on a double turn on your tree lord. Yep. Or a spirit of Durthu. Yeah, so that was a good one, I think. Oh, wait, and it's order, so you could use an ally. <gasps> Can you give dinners to Gotrek? Yeah, technically. Oh my fucking Because God. he becomes a nomad feastmaster. And that means you can make him fly. Yep. If he's near a caravan. Oh my god, allies uh... on the last page. Uh okay. 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 Amazing, I've just realized. Okay, great. Um Okay. Uh Earth Howl. Is cast on a seven and successfully cast. Pick a terrain feature within 18 inches of the caster till the start of your next hero phase. If your opponent spends a command point or relentless hero discipline point for a hero until uh, or a unit within 16 of that terrain feature to use a command ability, roll a dice. On a four plus command point or relentless discipline point is not used, but the command ability has no effect. Oh no, it is used, sorry. It is used, but the command ability has no oh, nice. effect. Do you know yeah. what we needed to do? What? Pick some relentless discipline points more. I agree. <laughs> I deeply agree. Excellent. Uh, uh, like that one, just for that. Uh, yeah. Owen, Owen got a big vein popping out his head at this very moment. Yeah, i got to say, shout out to the rogue in the chat, said they need some kind of Aydna tie-in called Meals on Seals. I agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Maybe you could ally some ogres in, maybe some sort of like mercenary ogres, and they could be Meals and Deals. Um, yeah, not bad. Uh, Bunch of Storm, storm Trek Chariots. Uh, meals and wheels. Sorry, carry on, James. Is auspicious tidings cast on a six? If you cast it, uh, Nomad Feastmasters unit. Uh, oh, select one. Sorry, Nomad Feastmasters unit within six of the caster, or within six of an encampment. So the 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 tent circle. Until your next hero fires, they get the double turn lucky scoundrels mechanic. Oh wow, that's huge. So that's pretty good. So this is pretty good. I think you, if you're taking the swan, though, Leaves of Empathy is the biggest one. Give everyone all the dinners. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm going to go for all the dinners. Like, Leaves of Empathy is a bit of a no-brainer, right? Like, you obviously can do that. But what about yeah. Guardian of Garan? Get that tree lord up. So I think you deserve, You should make... She should be a lawmaster. 
Unless you take a bunch of hedge wizards up dudes' uh, butts. But. <laughs> so, just because I'm here, right? Yeah. So, the Nomad Feastmasters allies are Wanderers. They're not alive for long. Yep. Uh, Blaze Trail may only if may affect uh, Blaze Trail may ally any Citizen Sigmar unit. Okay. That's one Cure of the stuff tail may use mercenary mega gargants and conspiring carnets. Oh, okay. All right, so different names. Um and then it says allies can only be taken if you take 255 <laughs> <men."> <laughs> every time. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, still funny. Uh, still funny. <laughs> All right, some of the other units that we haven't talked about yet. So next up, uh, the Castronome Guard, and you can take these as battle line if some requirements are met. I can't remember which one it is. I think Blazing Trail, I think, yep. maybe. Um, so they've got a five-up save, and they've got three wounds apiece, and they move eight inches, and they're bravery six, which is a bit of a shame. And I think they come in units of three. James, can you check that for me? Oh, no, units of five, sorry. Uh, yep. So they're 15 wounds on a five-up armor save. Four, 140 points. Uh, what are we called? The Gastronome, Gastronome Guard. Guard. Uh, 140 points for five. God, and their I've... Blaze Trail. Can I just say, considering I only got this two hours ago, I've committed this to memory already pretty well. I like, love that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so once safe trails into Gur were discovered and trading between Nomad and the Ugamore tribes became commonplace, Crag oh. Ibix were highly sought after as beasts of burden, ideally suited to the various punishing terrain of the trail. The unruliest are chosen by the gastronome guard as mounts to help defend the nomadic communities on the move. They're goat gnomes. Well, they're gnomes on goats, uh, effectively. Uh, they're, as always, rubbish in combat. Um, and then this unit's crack ibex attacks with their prodigious horns, um, uh, which is their mount. And one model of this unit can be a stout foot. Add one to the attacks uh, characteristic of that model's weapons. So pretty, quite a lot of wounds, James, to be honest. If you can take these guys as battle line, I know you're super interested in 45 lads, but could I interest you in 15 goat riders? Just not as funny, are they? I think they're pretty funny. Like, you could charge people and be like, go out of here. <laughs> goat, goat out of here. Yeah, go out of here. Okay. Yeah. Go home. Go home. Okay, apparently. Um, anyway. Uh, so they've got a, a, a champion who adds plus one to their attack characteristic. One in every five models in this unit can be a guard signaler, uh, which means you add one to the bravery characteristic for people. And then loudmouth, uh, you've got that three-up ward save uh, on the loudmouth, basically, who, who takes your damage. Uh, when this model makes a move, it can pass over terrain features as if, they were, as if it could fly. Innate topography, double the attack characteristic for this unit's prodigious horns if that unit is wholly on or within a terrain feature. Not forgetting you could cast a spell to make them be wholly within. Um, and also you could use the caravan to be wholly within. So double the attack characteristic of this unit's prodigious horns. So that would be four attacks per goat. So if nice. you had 15, you would have 60 goat horn attacks. That's true. And... Mm -hmm. uh, those lucky scoundrels gives more wounds in addition on sixes to wound. Thanks, wow. Camel Cabbage. So they could get it on hits and wounds if you get a double turn. Okay. Or double turned. Okay. I love how people in the chat are like the banner gives plus one bravery to stag units just their own. First time I've read it. So great news. I love that. <laughs> like, good. Thank you, Tyromancer. Um, so, uh, so you could have 60 attacks doing sixes to wound, doing mortal wounds. Hello, yep. skinks. Hello, skinks. Uh, and then you've got uh, Leaping Headbutt. If the hit roll for an attack made by this unit's produced horns is unmodified six, that attack, attack inflicts mortal wounds as well. Holy shit, James. These are good. Mortal wounds on sixes to hit. Mortal hits on sixes to wound. In addition... Are you not any normal damage. You're not thinking this is good? Yeah, they're good. They're just not... As cute as the little lads, two hundred and fifty-five of them. Wait, well, just take just take fifteen of these guys. That's what I'm saying. Just ten. I'll just... I'll think about it. Okay, they're pretty outputy. That's what I'm gonna say. These are your Death Star unit. Um, at Death Bravery Star... Six. Death Star goats. <laughs> Death Star goats. So what would what would fifteen cost us? Two hundred eighty, three hundred twenty points. Yep. <laughs> pretty pricey. Still pretty... on Ibex. But imagine this, you could give them a five, four up ward, yeah? 
you yep. could be you could have you could they could have breakfast lunch and dinner applied to them that's true reducing the save of the opposing army by one yeah you get the swan to be sick and cast a purple sun they're going to be you're going to be rend three on 60 attacks nice i honestly think that's pretty good you could be given a plus one to wound right 420, thank you. I didn't do the maths. Hashtag blaze it. Okay, so there's the goats. They're the goats. We've done the big tree dude. We've done the hedge wizard. We've done the, the fella. We haven't done our scouts or the griffhound hobolars yet. Have you seen them yet? Uh, I saw the, the little fly guys as we were going up and down. Yeah. Stop sending me pictures of goats in the DMs while we're live. <laughs> it's actually an IMAX. <laughs> Uh, so no man scouts uh, used to operating outside of the protective magical veil of the trail and less susceptible to the relentless metabolism of your typical nomad the nomad scout is the perfect hunter patient difficult to spot and as silent as any elven forest strider ooh 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 <laughs> okay. so they move five Six up save, six bravery with one wound. They're faster they than a, a regular th nomad. Yeah. They have a ranged attack. Oh, okay. So they always have a bow and some knives. Uh, and the hero, well, leader model person gets one extra attack of all their weapons. Okay, perfect. So, and they're also so land huggers. Ten? Yeah, ten. Tens. They come in. 11 shots, yeah. Okay. 11 shots, threes, fours, no rem one damage. 11 um, shots. So during your hero phase, if this unit is wholly on or within a terrain feature, it can be it can go prone, so okay. lay on the floor, yep. until the start of your next hero phase. While in prone, enemy units may not pick this unit as the target for an attack with missile weapons. This unit cannot move or attack with its missile weapons, and this unit fights at the start of the combat phase. Okay. This unit cannot fight again in the phase unless an ability or spell allows it to fight more than once. Right. Okay. So it cannot shoot, can get out the way, and gets to hit before it gets hit. But it's not very fighty. So it'd be 11 attacks, 4 is 5, no rem, 1 damage. Okay. However, Veiled Cloaks, instead of setting this unit in a battlefield, you can place it to one side and say it's making yep. a Veiled Advance as a reserve unit. If you do so at the end of your movement phase, you can set up uh, its unit on a battlefield more than six inches of any units. It's the second time you can set up something within six inches yep. as opposed to nine. Um, uh, at the start of the fourth battle round, any models that are still in reserve are slain. And then this unit may ignore all modifiers from the It's Been a Long Day trait. Uh, so they're not, they're not getting hangry. Well, they're hunters, aren't they? So they're probably. Oh, just... but it's. But it's may ignore, so we could ignore them all till turn four, then be hangry and go ham. Just go go super hard with their 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 ten attacks, right? Yep. Um. Yeah. Open fire. We can't sir. We're laying down prone. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know what the point of laying down prone is. Uh, I guess they could get on an objective. If there was some terrain on an objective, you lay down. They can't get shot. You force them in. They're like a booby trap. I guess thinking about current battle tactics, they're great for barge to enemy lines. Um. Yep. Although they're not. Uh, they're not galley vets. Oh no, they are, they're not battle line, are they? So, no. you, so you can't unfortunately get the extra VP. Good for desecrate their land. Pretty nice in that. Um, I quite like that. And I guess, I guess you could kind of like deep strike them and then hide and then just keep laying prone. So you basically grab an objective, you just hide and hide and keep hiding every hero phase, and you're like just keep laying prone. So your opponent has to walk over and then fucking stab you. Yeah. Okay, it's pretty interesting. I quite like that. That's uh, pretty fun. Yeah. That's... Griffhound Hobbelars. It requires a huge amount of food to keep a gastronomic caravan healthy. The Habinka Grove supplies are supplemented by the hunting efforts of the Nomad Scouts and Griffhound Hobbelars that roam ahead of the outside of the trail. They are at their most effective when they work together to take down their prey or would-be attacker. Okay, so okay. they've got a hunting bow. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, which are one attack each. Are these coming in unit of fives? Three wounds each on a six up save? Uh, <laughs> unit of five, 120 points. I mean, they're only... Oh, the they... the scouts were 100 points for 10. The scouts were 100 points. Okay. Yeah, so these guys seem pretty cheap for like... 
because uh, they're move nine inches. They've got three wounds apiece. Yep. So 120 points for 15 wounds, but yep. on a six up armor save. It's quite nice. Um, and then you add two to the attack characteristics units, beaks and claws attacks. Um, uh, uh, that target a unit previously hit by attacks made by the uh, by another friendly forager unit, so which so would the be the scout shoot. Yeah, and then these lads go in. Or oh, these guys shoot and then go in. Surely, because they could shoot but with their bows. But it's another friendly, so it can't be them. Oh, okay. So the scout shoots a unit, and then the hobblers get. Plus two to the attacks profile on the beaks and claws, which mean four or, attacks apiece. Or I guess you have two units of these: one shoots, other shoots. They both buff each other. And they all go in. And they charge cross. Yeah, they charge yeah. cross. Okay, nice. All right, like that. Uh, and then dial attack each time this unit attacks with its melee weapons. It can make a normal move after all of its attacks have been resolved. And if it does so, it must finish the normal move more than three inches from any units. So it basically shoots, charges Makes in. It. Gets two attacks on its beaks and claws, which would be four attacks each. So, so twenty attacks, threes and fours, right? No rend unless we've shot them with a dinner to worsen yep. their save by one and cast a purple sun. So now they're rend two, right? Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, aren't griffhounds meant to be noble? But not sure they'd be ridden by a gnome. Mm, interesting, James. What do you think? Uh, maybe they don't know. Fair. Little lads. Or maybe these little griffhounds, bred by gnomes, not so noble. They're like peasant griffhounds. Well, you've got a couple of choices, haven't you? Like, do you want to be ridden by um, a, a hobbler, or do you want a hedge wizard up your bum? Those are your options. <laughs> Those are your options. Yeah. Right. And then, then they have the weird griffhound rule where they can smack people up if they come on from reserve. Yeah, I, I, yeah, the the warning cry. So like they can shoot and they can um, they can shout. I quite like the idea that you don't even need like you can charge in and then run away. So you can take a unit of ten of these, charge in, run away, charge in, run away. Up about that's quite up nice. about Espe all day long. Especially if you took the end of spell that makes units strike last. So you could maybe multi charge a couple of these units in. Yeah. Yeah. Bop it like bop in, bop out. So you have got some real options. Shake it all about. Just do the whole thing. Yeah, hokey cokey. Uh, and then our final unit to look at is the Nomad Scouts riding Jade Eagles. Okay, painted brown in this picture. Um, so they move 16 inches with three wounds and a six-up armor save, and they're bravery six. James, what's the story? Uh, the Eagles of Guyane are intelligent creatures soaring high, able to assist the Nomads in their efforts to feed the gastronomic caravans with their keen eyesight and swift action. In return for their service, areas of the somewhere groves are set aside for their young to be protected from the dangers of the realms. Okay. Uh, so you get... Oh, I didn't look. So they move 16, and you get uh, 5 for 130 points. 5, so 15 wounds for 130 points. It's pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um... You can put a lot the of wounds on the board in this army. Attacks, not amazing. No, four four uh, attacks though each. So that's yeah. gonna be that's gonna be twenty attacks, fours and threes. The bird, bird, fightier than the lad. Um, tandem hunting. Yeah. Uh, so you improve the rend characteristic of this unit's beaks and talons by two for attacks that target a unit previously hit by any forager unit. Oh, okay, so. Wait, we improve the rend by one, do we? No, by two. two. So you know, if we throw in a dinner at them, that's going to be rend three? Yeah. James, if we do a purple sun, that's rend four hawks. <laughs> Just biting and scratching. They should all be seagulls for a start. Wait, and we can give them all out attack. Is there a plus one to wound thing? I yeah. Like there is some. Where is it? Wasn't it the turn thing? Oh, yeah, Wasn't it gives it one a plus one to wound. Yeah. These guys could be these guys. Five of these guys could be twenty attacks, threes and twos, rend four. Yeah, I think I think if you're playing these, you're playing like a forager army, right? The lads pop out, they shoot their bows, the birds go in. These like go ham. Uh, so also, sorry if and then they have thermal highway. If the last me the last meal eaten from the go with your gut battle trait for this unit was lunch. 
then this unit may receive the redeploy command without the command being issued and no command points spent. In addition, instead of making a redeploy roll, you can choose the result of the roll from a D6. The unit, the roll must be one to six. Okay. 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 I don't know how I feel about that. How do you feel about it? Uh, I think it'd be annoying. But it only happened once, right? So if you've only got one unit of these, it's only happening once anyway. And if they've got some shooting, all these lads are dead. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, well, they seem good. They seem good, I think. I think they seem very strong. I think. Well, I think are... now, I'm 255 lads and Swan. Yeah. Swan and the Foragers with some hot pots and my my main lad at the back, my fist on. My fist on. My fist right on. <laughs> he is the number one bay. Right, let's look at the sub factions and I think I think we're ha oh, actually I wanna quickly look at the uh I'm gonna fly through some of the enhancements, James, okay? Okay. So get ready. Okay, so call them out fly. if you can see a combo. Okay, hold on, I've lost my, my cursor. So right, so artifacts of power. Okay. Uh a trail master only Oh no, hold on, there's way more than that. Uh, enhancements, command traits. Prized paunch, add one to the general's wound characteristic if this model is affected by the dinner ability from the go with your one, add one to the save rolls. Pretty good, um, yep. straight away on a, on a cockerel. Trailblazer, after armies have been set up before the first round begins, D3 units can move up to six inches. Who oh, can you say goat riders or hawk attackers? Let's go. Nice. Champion Poltier. Um, if you choose this unit to have a mount trait, then you could choose one extra mount trait for this unit. So we could have a war caravan with two mount traits. Love that idea. Yeah. Oh, no, war cockerel. Because um, you can't... Yeah, war cockerel. Because you can't have a yeah. mount trait. It's not a hero, is it? The. No. The, the, okay. Um, it's just a caravan. Head chef only. In your hero phase, you can heal D3 wounds that have been allocated to this general and each of the Nomad Feastmasters units that are affected by always hungry ability. Uh, always hangry ability, sorry situational i think uh head chef uh, subtract two inches from the distance enemy units can pile in when they start a piling move within three inches of this general or enemy nomad feastmasters unit affected by the always hungry ability that's great so make a unit always hungry then it's not very far that ability though uh within think. three inches of this general or enemy no or any nomad feastmaster units yeah i thought he's always hang oh, i guess last turn strong he can make people always hungry though yeah, I didn't think it was very far. <coughs> I think it's not. Three inches. Three inches of him. Okay. Flaming yeah, Cuisine, this general inches. and any enemy Nomad Feastmasters units affected by Always Hungry ability can move an, an extra inch when they do run or pile in. It's okay. Not too bad. Not too sure about the head chef at the minute. Not really sure I'm putting a head chef in when our boys exist. Yeah, take my fist on. Yeah, take my fist on all the time. Right, Spirit of Durthu or a Tree Lord Ancient. If this uh, unit is you've got Roots of Resurrection, if this unit is on uh, the battlefield each time a Spirit of Durthu or Ancient Tree Lord is destroyed for it's removed from play, add a Guardian counter. Right, so you can take a bunch of those. Uh, so yep. we've got more ways. I think you can very reliably get two Tree Lords in a game. Um, peak Photosynthesis. If this unit is on the battlefield when a friendly Spirit of Durthu, Tree Lord Ancient or Tree Lord is affected by a lunch ability from... Uh, the go with your gut battery, add one to the attack characters that units weapons. Okay, pretty good. Okay. Yep. Love that. Requires you to have the ability to do lunch though. Or uh, roll lunch. Yeah. And then you've got dense foliage. Roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or a mortal wound to a hero that is garrisoned inside this unit. Um uh, on a four plus a wound or mortal wound is negated. Um in addition a uh, hero in this garrison is inside. In addition, a hero that is garrisoned inside this unit is counted as being wholly uh, on or within a terrain feature. So if you put Hedge Wizard up a butt, he's got a four at ward save, and he's in a terrain feature. That one's the worst one. That's 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 okay. Because uh, I'm never going to target the Hedge Wizard anyway. He's got terrible spells. So Yeah, and also I think like there's other ways to get the four plus ward. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hedge Hermit spells, though. Uh, sorry, abilities. Nomad Drover units uh, and Nomad Scout units holding the 12 inches general can shoot in your shooting phase using the Throwing Stones missile weapon shown on the General's War Scroll. So they can all throw stones. So you can have a unit 45 of 45 lads. Drovers. Now you're talking 45 Drovers, Hedge Hermit, 
and they're all going to throw stones and then they're all going to charge. It's pretty decent. Uh, Earth Shaper, after the armies are set up before the first battle round begins, you may select a train feature within 12 inches of this model. The nature's whimsy spell from the Terraformer law is automatically cast and cannot be unbound, which is nature's whimsy. Uh, we'll find out. Is it not? I think it's increase the terrain piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, right. Oh no! The nature's whimsy is the change of effect on the scenery table. We don't want that one. Okay. Yeah, we don't want that one at all. Okay, get rid of Earth Shaper. And they're bog bound misanthrope. Subtract two for, to a minimum of one, at uh, minimum of zero, sorry, from run and charge rolls for any units within one inch of any terrain feature that this general is wholly within or on. That's quite nice because we already know that we can reduce their charge rolls another way. Oh, and we, he could be in a tree. Yeah, he could be in a tree and then make the tree minus two to charge. Interesting. Okay, artifacts of power. Trail master only. Uh, desired. Uh, desired ring. Yep. No jokes in the chat. Um, if an enemy unit within 12 inches... Desired ring it makes me think of this. Oh, God damn these electric sex bands. Don't worry, James. I promise it works. Uh, right. If an enemy unit within 12 inches of the bearer uses command ability, <coughs> roll a dice on a 4+, plus, the command ability has no effect, but the command point relentless this point is still used. You could double that up with a spell and make it so that they can't use any command ability yeah. points. That's pretty fun. On four pluses. No back, it's a four plus, so I wouldn't take it. No bark shield. The bearer good. of the no bark shield may not be selected as the target of a spell cast by an enemy wizard. Ooh. Nice. Um, uh, and then advantageous lance. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons. If the bearer is affected by those lucky scoundrel battle trait, improve the Ren characteristics of this weapon by two. <gasps> Ren five warhawks, James. Oh, no, it's only the bearer's melee weapons. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's only the bearer. Oh, boo. Okay, under the cloak, uh, head chef only. Uh, no, my feasts are holier than 12 inches of the bearer are not affected by it. it's been a long day, which is good. Um, then you've got... Uh, these are Oh, these are artifacts, aren't they? Then you've got Ashgree Fire Spice at the end of the enemy charge phase, like one enemy within three inches. That's have to more wounds. It's fine. And then unique menu, once per turn, the bearer can issue the Inspiring Presence command ability without a command point being spent. Pretty good on your very low bravery army. Don't yeah. hate that. Don't hate that. Uh, Hedge Hermit, you can have, after territory has been chosen, but before armies are set up, select a train feature within your territory and add a guardian counter to it. Bro, if we take a Hedge Hermit, yeah, we give him a command trait, stick him up a butt. The spell. Yeah, the spell, right? And then we just slam some dudes near some terrain. <coughs> trees getting, from trees. We're getting tree lords like they're fucking going out of fashion. I'm really tempted to put a hedge hermit up someone's butt now. Uh, okay, hedge hermit. Friendly nomad feastmasters units holding than 18 inches of bearer may roll D3 instead of rolling a dice for his backshot roll. Mm, that's okay. And then stonebane root sash reduce the damage inflicted by each successful attack. The targets the bearer to one. He's got four wounds. That's fine. I don't want that to be true. Um, uh, and then we've got some trail thief stuff and some mount traits and some nomad tinkers okay let's go <laughs> okay <laughs> this is the worst bit of battle tomes the worst bit in battle tomes are all of this bit in my opinion Like, and also I hate that they don't have points costs because immediately it makes it not as cool no disrespect to the author of this battle tome or any battle tome but like I just want them to be points costed do you know what I mean I want like a hundred yeah. point like artifact and i want like a 15 point artifact all the time as interesting as they are you know these like they're great right uh okay so um uh proprietous pilfering so this is for the trail thief james the guy that's going to try and nick our shit okay yeah uh forager's veil if the bearer was set up in a concealed position using smoke me a kipper i'll be back for breakfast ability the bearer cannot be set up on the battlefield until the number of your turns this model will attempt and selected mission after which, at the end of your movement phase, you can set this model up on the battlefield more than three inches away from any units. So you can get within three inches with this guy. But he's rubbish. Correct. Um, so we won't do that. He doesn't want to be within three. <laughs> he, doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to be within 24. Like, wait. Like, he's just like, all right. And you're like, what are you going to do now? He's like, die. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> he pops out and he's like, oh, damn it. I told them to make me a kipper. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's going to waste. Oh, my God. Okay. Knots of confoundment. Uh, when the bearer is picked to fight, instead of making a pilot move and then attacking, it can withdraw it instead. If it does so, the bearer must make a normal move up to five inches and must retreat. In addition, enemy units that finish the charge move within three inches of the hero may not pile in during their activation. Get around them six-inch pile-ins. That's true. That's true. Um, that's true. Uh, and then adventurer's map. Using the smoke me a kip breakfast breakfast um... ability, missions are successful on a five rather than a six straight away. So you might right, be able I'm to destroy. Roll. Hang on, Th three turns worth. I've taken that. Okay, so You've... turn one, five plus. One doesn't work. Turn, turn two, four plus. Doesn't work. Turn three, three plus. No. <laughs> turn four, two plus. Yeah. You've destroyed that artifact. Turn four, you lost your artifact. Yeah. Um, and that it hero was... was already dead to my swan. It was <laughs> fucking. They're sick. Right, okay. So then, <laughs> Giran's bounty. So, Spirit of Durthu or Tree Lord only. The bearer always counts as being wholly within eight inches of a friendly awakened wildwood. Um, and once per battle in your movement phase, you can remove the bearer from the battlefield and set up anywhere uh, on the battlefield more than nine inches away. So, that's pretty interesting. So, you can use the Tree Lord Ancient. Well, the not the Tree Lord Ancient, but you could. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could. Oh, he's a named character, though, right? So, you can't take that on that guy. But you take a spirit uh, of Durthu. Yep. The other guy can summon a tree. You can yep. teleport to the tree. Yep. Failing your nine inch charge. Aurora Fauna. Uh, set one of the bearer's missile weapons. Add one to any hit rolls made for attacks made by the weapon. In addition, add three inches of the range character to this weapon. Yeah. And Telesplade. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons when you look up the value of the bearer's damage table. It counts as zero. That's right. Spirit of Durthu. Just chopping, chopping people down. Chopping all day long. Chopping all day long. Okay. Uh, and then mount traits, short flight. Okay, Trailmaster only. This model is eligible um, uh, to fight in the combat phase if it's within six inches and pile in from three inches. Ah, no charges needed. In addition, this model nice. can fly when it piles in. Very cool. Rustled feathers, if this model is within six inches of an enemy monster, add one to the to hit and wound rolls. This model's razor sharp beaks. Oh boy. Yes, hello. Thank you to Velatron for resubscribing for 56 months in a row. Let's go, Velatron. Let's go. Um, and then Thick Blood. Add two to this model's run and charge roll if it's affected by the breakfast ability, uh, which is quite nice. Because when they get there, James, they're going to die. <laughs> so, uh, But the War Caravan. This is what I think you would take the upgrade for. Um the Dissident's Hives roll dice each time an enemy unit attempts to carry out a monstrous rampage or perform a heroic action within range. This model on a four plus, you ignore it. That's pretty nice. nice. Uh, murder holes. Um, no Madrova units garrison within this model always count as being affected by the rabble oomph ability on their war scroll, regardless of the number of models with left within the unit. Exploding sixes. <gasps> exploding sixes. Uh, yeah, is it exploding sixes? Yeah, it is. Yeah, exploding sixes. Sixes count as two hits, not one. And then Granite Conduit, this model counts, gains the monster keyword, so you can do monstrous actions. Nice. Nice. Okay. Pretty good. And then the spell law we've done. Uh, Sub-factions. Sub-faction. The last bit. The last bit. Um, okay. So the first one is the Nomad Trail. Nomad Trail. So the Artavulian Projectors. Okay. Yeah. I've got a command ability, a command trait, an artifact of power, and they've also got some other stuff. So the first bit, when a Nomad Trail Tree Lord Ancient from this faction uses its Silent Communion ability to set up an Awakened Wildwood, add a Guardian counter to that Awakened Wildwood. In addition, if there is no friendly spirit of Durthu on the battlefield, when they're using the Rouse the Guardian's battle trait, when four Guardian counters rather than three have been added to a terrain feature, the player who added the fourth Guardian counter may spend all Guardian counters to get a spirit of Durthu instead. Any summoned spirit of death units must set within six inches of the train feature and more than six inches of enemy units. So this is your like summon tree lords and dearthus. Nice. Really nice. Yeah. Uh, any friendly uh, expert hitches, any friendly nomad trail tree lord, tree lord ancients or dearthu units um, may be garrisoned up uh, by up to sixteen friendly <laughs> unmounted. <laughs> That's a lot of lads up the butt. Barefoot <laughs> dudes. <laughs> Oh my and then, god! And then it's just a garrison, so the garrison rules apply. And then it's a garrison, a tree lord, a dirthu with a tree lord up <laughs> his butt. 
No, no Adirth... Oh, my God. 16 we... lads up a dearth who's butt. So you got Hedge Wizard and then just 15 lads in a yeah. butt. Oh, my God. Amazing. Um, uh, okay. And then command ability. You can use command ability uh, in your hero phase if your general's on the battlefield by spending two command points. If you do so, place a guardian counter on the terrain feature. Bro, you can get... You could get, nice. like, two Durthus on the board on, like, the second turn. Yeah. you just be summoning like it's going out of fashion. There's going to be so many guys up so many butts. Right? Oh, no, apparently not. Do you well, only get one Durthu? Can you only get one Durthu? I don't know. But, like, feels like you can. Yeah, if there's no Spirit of Durthu on the battlefield, you can only ever have one Spirit of Durthu. Oh, okay, but, but I can you get a dirt through a tree lord. You can kill him off and get another one. Yeah, I can get a dirt through a tree lord super fucking quick, right? Yeah, or, you know, fill the butt of dirt through, throw him forward, get him killed, pop the lads out, get another one. Expert conquerors on those lads, yeah? Yeah. Get another one. You're absolutely right, James. You've you've cracked the code. Right, Command Trait uh, is a trail wizard. <coughs> um, once per hero phase, if this general is wholly within, uh, honor within a train feature, it may use the enthralled landscape after casting a spell. If this general does so, you may cast one additional spell in this hero phase from the Terraformer law. And even if it does know that spell, add one to the casting rolls. Okay. And then the artifact of power. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've lost my mouse again. Um, uh, at the start of the hero phase, the bearer can heal one wound allocated to it. If the bearer is wholly or on or within a train feature, it heals D3. Okay. Little heal. Do you have to take him? The first uh. nomad trail hero to receive an artifact must be given the Verduous Blossom. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so you definitely have to take that. Okay. All right, so that one is if you're going to go for loads of tokens, head wizards. And trees. And trees. Okay, I like that. Next up, the curate trail. Uh, oh, re no. Replace the towering allies' allegiance ability with the hungry guides. <laughs> A Nomad Feastmasters army from your Curet Trail army can include a coalition units, um, but it must be the Ogre Moor tribes. One in every four units can be Ice Brow Hunter, Frost Sabers, Butcher, Firebelly, Man Eaters, or Gluttons. <gasps> oh. Do you know what? Yeah. You were right, but wrong. This right. is the Dads and Lads Battle Tome. There was a Dads and Lads Battle Tome. There you go. The little lads have got their dads. But the little lads have got their dads. Oh, thanks, James. That's made it all loads better. Okay, all right, great. Uh, so Hangry um, is an ability. Curate Trail Head Chef units use their Always Hangry ability uh, to two additional Nomad Feasters units to be Hangry. Okay, pretty nice, nice pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, uh, command ability. You can use this command ability in your hero phase. If you do so, pick one Curate Trail unit wholly within 12 inches of a hero. Um, that unit must receive the command. Add one to the wound rolls for attacks made by that target. Uh, an enemy monster to your next hero phase. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Plus one to wound on a unit is pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. Good Good on those little, like, um, forager lads. Oh, yeah. Really good on those forager lads. Um, uh, then command trait. Uh, the first... Uh, the current trail general that is a butcher can have this. All ogre units gain the nomad fastest keyword and the curate trail keyword. Nice. Whoa. Whoa. So you get hang hangry ogres. But you also get all of the other stuff. Yeah. You get They get the Nomad Fe Feastmasters code word, keyword, so they're going to get five up ward saves, four up wards. They're going to be they're going to be either have their breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Like, James, that's huge. All Although three I think of actually, the swans there. What? All three dinners, breakfast, lunch, dinner, if the swans there. Oh, I don't know if the... I think Breakfast, Lunch, and Dinner only affects Barefoot, though. So it might not affect... Oh, but no. the Swan does that thing where, like, she pops the big thing where it affects everyone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, uh, he's in Treat Me. <laughs> Lou Dog, I agree. Uh, right, then, the artifact is the Baron must always count as being affected by those lucky scoundrels battle trait when making attacks that target a monster oh. uh, or an enemy monster. Okay, pretty fun. Nice. Right, and then the Blaze Trail. James, what's this do? Uh, so the Blaze Trail uh, cannot use the Towering Allies Allegiance ability. So that's no trees. Yeah. Uh, if a Blaze Trail general has the Stout keyword, Stout units that are not leaders become battle line. So this is the Goat Lads. Okay. Uh, they have rolling, rolling, rolling. 
Limp Bizkit style. Yeah. Uh, unison. Uh, is this this one? Yeah. Uh, units garrisoned inside a blaze trail caravan may leave the garrison after it has made a normal move. Add one to the attack characteristic of all weapons carried by units that leave the garrison using this ability until the start of next year phase. Interesting. Nice. Yeah, okay. Uh, they're traveling a lot, so models in units that are in the garrison of any caravans are counted towards gaining control of an objective. So you can put the lads in, get on the objective, count, pop them out, all the same turn. Uh, in addition, if you are fighting a pitch battle, you can include one additional blaze trail behemoth in your army. So we could have five caravans. Ooh, five caravans. Okay. Um, their command ability, at the start of each battle round, you gain a command point from the dumb pluck command trait. You may immediately spend that command point to use this command ability. If you do so, select a unit wholly within 12 inches of a blaze caravan, hero, or wholly within 18 inches of a blade trail general. The selected unit can shoot, or if it was in three of any enemy units, it can fight. Encounters being affected by those lucky scoundrels. So, like, in your hero phase, if you pop this, they can fight or shoot. Crazy. If they're by a caravan. Absolutely crazy. Um, a blaze trail general has to have a, this command trait. Uh, at the start of each battle round, your opponent wins a roll-off. You get a command point. That's okay. pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, an extra one, and uh, at the start of each, uh, sorry, the artifact, uh, so the first Blaze Trail hero has to have this. Uh, at the start of each battle round, if your opponent wins the roll off, the bearer, oh, it's the Uberic Cow, sorry. So the bearer of the Uberic Cow may make a normal move or retreat six inches. They cannot finish within three of an enemy model. After that, who takes the first turn? Oh, okay. So basically, if we do the roll off thing uh someone decides who's going first if your opponent wins the roll before anything else happens i move my little lad yes yes yeah okay all right interesting well that's oh we're not gonna do grand church and battle tactics ever in a thousand years so let's just let's just skip them forever um okay james like number one i think it's got loads of character like it's yep. cute it's cute right like it's gnomes and i think like you can see that some serious work has been put in into creating the the kind of like the story around the gnomes um yep. and what they do there's a nice variety of units we've got like two fighter units which are cavalry based uh you know either the hawks or the fighters we've got some unique mechanics with the caravan uh which is quite fun uh, i really enjoy that the swan fields auto include the dinners is really great i love all the dinners and elements as well and then the three sub factions feel like all three would play very differently to each other. Yep. Which I think yeah, and you get a bunch of different allies and stuff, right? Yeah, like you can build your Sylvaneth version of the of the nomads, and then you could build your ogre like feeding version of the nomads, and then maybe more of a purist caravan nomads. Yeah. Which I think as well. Um, is there anything that really stood out to you? Is there anything like you were like, I really like this element? Yeah, I think like I'm swanning like 255 lads for the lols. But then actually, when we did that last bit, I almost think you want like swan, just the scout lads, uh, foragers, just the foragers. Yeah. Uh, and maybe some pots. I think I feel like I have to have my fist on. He's my number one lad. Yeah, he's pretty great. Yeah, he's pretty great. Yeah, I think uh, I think like all of the, the the swan feels like it brings a lot to the army, which like which like feels like you would miss in other ways. But then if you put the swan into the into the hedge wizard sub faction, you kind of like I don't know because you've got the spell casting. You don't have any pluses to cast. That feels a bit rough in some ways. Obviously, you also want to cast the fucking hedge at every opportunity, the end of spell, because it's just amazing. <laughs> um like yeah so there's some really nice unique features to the book which like w i think my favorite bit was like that you have enough allegiance abilities that interact with other sub other armies so silver death and yep. ogres specifically um which i think is really nice and I thought it was really good as well my one bit is that i think um you would need about a billion tokens to keep track of what was happening and you would, like, it doesn't feel... It kind of makes sense that someone like Darren wrote it, who, and Darren's a very techie player, so he likes lots of overlapping synergy and combinations, and therefore it really feels like a book that's got loads of overlapping and, and, and condensed uh, combinations. 
And so, like, if you were playing against it, you I think if you were playing against it, you would be fucking lost what was happening. Like, if I was like... Have you had your dinner? Have you had your lunch? Who's got lunch? Who's got dinner? Who's got breakfast? I think you could solve it with loads of tokens really easily because the, the buffs themselves aren't overly complicated. But you're like, this unit has got this on it. This unit's got this on it. Like, as the Nomad player, you would be keeping track of that information yourself yeah. quite quite ferociously. But as the opposing player, I feel like it would be quite daunting to understand what the fuck was happening. Uh, I think ultimately, I think that's my only kind of feedback. Like, but you would need you because it would be quite um, like uh, token heavy, and it feels like your phases, like your hero phases, etc., might be fairly long. Working out who's got what, what the debuffs are, like it's. I think it's be really easy to forget that you know turn three, your your units are minus one to charge. Yeah, that's going to be one of those easy ones to forget. I think. Um, so, like, and I don't think I. I don't know. Yeah, like that's quite fun. But like, ultimately, it's got like, lo- like everything interacts with each other really nicely, which is also really fun for people who like everything to interact with each other nicely a lot as well. Because yeah, people... I think it plays in every turn, right? It plays in every turn. It does a lot. It interacts with your opponent's turn. Um, yeah, I think it, like it's interesting. It'll be super interesting. I think there's like for us to have like come into this after like two hours of having it, like there's loads there. And like at the end, normally when we read a book, I'm like, oh, that's the list I'd take. But here I'm like, oh, there's like three here that I'd like have to calculate in points and decide how that plays. And if I want them hungry or if if they have to be like have had dinner for it to work. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I think it's good as well. Like, I think uh, my, my final note um, is going to be, don't forget, this is the beta version of the book. Um, so there is going to be playtests and there'll be links in the show notes for people to uh, to to get to it. Also, community um, a community-produced book as well, right? So a bunch of different people helped with playtesting, writing it. Darren definitely took the lead, but you've got different artists uh, doing the front cover, doing the design work inside the book, um, doing playtesting and a bunch of other stuff. So there's a lot of that. James, just a quick thought. Um, I really feel like this is kind of the future of wargaming in lots of ways. Obviously, Age of Sigmar is Games Workshop's baby. I'm, I'm not saying anything against that that um uh, and i'm not trying to take that away from them but it really does feel like um uh homebrew battle tomes really feel like the future in lots of ways um uh for events in my opinion because that way you get bretonians back on the board you get tomb kings back on the board you get other armies back on the board which haven't seen play for a long time you know you kind of like joked earlier like well wonder is not long for left for them but they have just been basically left by the wayside in cities of sigma for a long time right and yeah, yeah. like someone being able to create a Wanderers battle tome that feels like it reflects the flavour of Wanderers would be really great, and I think I think people would actively be encouraging that. Hopefully, this is the start of a trend where we see lots of kind of custom battle tomes produced and put that out there in the world because there's been loads of creativity and excitement that's gone into this book, um, and I think that that's really fun because that's really what you want. Uh, the community to be like someone in the chat said that they weren't going to stay because it wasn't it was a fan made battle tome and it wasn't a games workshop battle tome and i'm like well there's more creativity and effort has gone into this book than there's definitely gone into the last copy and paste daughters of cain book or whatever the next copy and paste book is going to be skaven Sk- sk- fucking Skaven. It's got a new command trait, actually, James. Fuck you. Completely different. Uh, sorry. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, like, I, and I think that that's a positive, right? Like, like the understanding. Yeah, it's fun, I think, as well, right? Yeah. I think, like, without being rude to anyone that works at Games Workshop, because I actually don't mean to be, but I don't know how many people write the rules, but let's say there's two or four. Like, this has been written by Darren, but also had input from the community. He's put it out to the community. He's had the community, you know kind of talk on it is now going into this beta book and then it's going back out to the community like so input wise maybe if this is 70 to 80 people that's you know multitudes more than a normal book sees and yeah. that's good i agree i agree well i hope everyone people enjoy- care more then maybe i think people care more I think people care more as well. Um, and I agree with you. Like, And I think also being able to talk to designers, this is also another shout out to Games Workshop, being able to uh, talk to designers of products is something that, that communities generally want. Every other business allows their, their, their creatives to engage with the community because actually it's an incredibly big positive uh, because they get feedback, they get ideas, they get to actually involve themselves in, in, in the community <coughs> that, they, uh, that they're a part of. Anyway, uh, James, thanks very much for hanging out with me today during this pleasure uh my love to everyone chat my love to all of you look after yourselves uh um uh like 
Uh, I hope you stay well, uh, stay healthy. Thanks very much. It's been a real pleasure talking to all of you. And uh, yeah, I'll just see you soon. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, obviously you can, uh, I'll include links to go uh, find Darren. Uh, but if you've enjoyed it, obviously please do like and subscribe and we'll see you soon. Look after yourselves and have a nice day.